Help. 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 Something's wrong with the ZPH stream. Check. Oh, okay. Oh. <clears throat> I forced it into doing what I wanted to do, which is that you guys can hear us. Yes. Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari games and the uh, best source for uh, talkies now. We That's have right, sound. We have talkies, We've yes. moved into the <laughs> 20th century. That's right. Almost the 21st, but you know. But uh, it is a day of technical difficulties. Oh my so god! Just everything be, broke. Just everything. Be prepared. Yes. Yeah. So probably more. We're going to be playing some twenty six hundred games. At what? What am I looking at? There's. They're complaining that Tanya ha is much much uglier than See? usual. <laughs> See? Yeah, that happens. Why did she cut her hair off and get hit with the ugly stick? <laughs> so many times. Uh, today is special. <laughs> Because we have cats, but we also have John Champo live. He'll be coming on very shortly. But we also have the world premiere. I'll put that in quotes. The world premiere of Spider's Arcade, which kind of premiered at PRGE for a first look. And we showed it on our live stream. But we're going to be playing it here in studio along with John Champo. And Darcy's here as well. Plus, we'll be also doing the unboxing of Tutankham. Oh, don't Arcade. do that! It won't be it won't be new anymore. Oh, it's it's been opened and oh. tested. And yeah, it, it all works. I'm pretty sure. Tough crowd. <laughs> yeah, hoping that Darcy's going to do the foley sound effects for all the games. Yeah, it's all going to be silent. <laughs> uh, the games won't have any sound. Yeah, it's whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. yeah scratchies and yeah, it's working well. <laughs> Oh my god, just uh, fail after fail today. Hopefully we can get through it. But the people who keep supporting us through the fails, our Twitch subscribers, are 8 bit Poet, Al Nefer, Andrew, Atari, Atari, 974, Atari, Age, Dark Dude, BR Poka, Brutus Dex, Burst Air, Captain Classic, Charles Donny Mouse, Stop It, Charles Wheel, and Chitla, <laughs> Cuban Ismo, Danny, Dave M, Drexel, Dr. Mukaz, Eric Cart, Gamma Dev, Great Defender. <laughs> Harold Arjou, JGW, Johnny WC, Kabuto Koda, Carl G. Karakai, Kroko, Quiviltever, Lambda Express, Manny Sipping Tea, Mark Yannis, Mark Space, Inc., Metal Lunar, Mick Muse, Mike Soul, Michael Town, Mr. Fix, Muddy Fonts, Nathan Strom, Nostalgic Pack Rat, Pro, Kohog, Arando, Ni, I'll just call him Rando, Ran, uh, R. Antwitz, <laughs> Raymond C., RC70, Rando Goes, Bentless, VG, Revan Tuller, Ricardo Pim, Six Weeks, Spinny B, Spiceware, Spinley, Astromirus, Thrust, Tiki Dan K, Tifos, Trekum D, Tween E, Vexer X, Vitoko, BBG, Double Down, and everybody else who's in the chat today. And if you'd like to support the show, you can click subscribe if you don't feel that we have failed you yet with these technical difficulties. It keeps, it keeps me humble <laughs> when shows fail like this. It's like, no, no, no. You, you, you can fail. <laughs> Don't yep. think you're high and mighty. You uh, just have to try a lot harder. Just we'll try. And every harder. once in a while, you need to you need to be forced to try like you used to Wait. have to try. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I guess <laughs> 25 years of broadcasting is not enough to get it get it solid just yet. We keep uh, changing things. The, the, that's true. The lesson is test before broadcasting, like many hours before. Um, we have some great shows coming up. We have a whole bunch of guests interviews coming up on the show. 
The Immortal John Hancock is going to be here on October 29th. We're going to be talking with him. Uh, we have a spotlight on Albert E. Russo, the guy who runs Atari Age. We're going to have a spotlight on Chris Walton along with the uh, release of Xevia's. Uh, we're going to have Atari Age Day 2024. We're going to have an interview with Bob DeCrescenzo, Pac-Man Plus, with his world premiere of Bounty Bob Strikes Back for the 7800, the first new Atari-released game on the 7800 in 33 years. Oh. Uh, we're going to also have the world premiere of Casey's Gold with an interview with developer Dan Kitchen from Audacity Games. All, all the, all the developers. So many things. <laughs> yes, all the people, all, all the companies, of them. all of them. We're also gonna have a Vectrex special. I've got some new Vectrex games up there. We also are gonna do a Halloween special. We're gonna force these cats into costumes. Oh. For at least five seconds before they freak out and try and tear them off. Uh, but speaking of Halloween. Um, Atari reached out to me. Said they are going to be updating. Strike Zone Bowling, like they did last year, uh, the uh, 2600 Homebrew on the VCS and changing it to the Halloween version of Strike Zone Bowling, um, like they did last year, and also the Christmas version when it goes to Christmas. Um, so uh, that's always fun to have different themes for the games. Uh, but let's bring on our special guest today. Uh, you know him. You love him. He's from Champ Games. He makes incredible Atari Twenty Six Hundred games. Would, they are incredible, actually. I, I was going to say they're credible, but they're not. They're they're incredible. They, they are incredible. <laughs> also credible as well. That's very strange to say. Incredible, incredible. Both are positive things. Um, who is going to talk with us about his brand new game, Spiders Arcade? Spiders. Ah. Uh, if you're at PRG, you got a sneak preview of that. And we're also going to be talking about Tutankham Arcade is brand new physical release of this game. So let's bring him on. Let's give a warm welcome to Mr. Oh, he's frozen on my screen. Let's fix that before we bring him on. How about that? Uh, remember, it's going to be a day of issues. So expect problems we'll wait for him to reappear on my screen of course he probably won't let's see nothing yet nothing you may yet. have to use your imagination to imagine John's John asleep. Jumbo. can you <laughs> unplug that and plug it back in <laughs> john's nodding off <laughs> he's falling asleep he's yawning Unplug. If you can imagine him. Yeah, plug it back in, please. Plug. So annoying. Oh my goodness. Why? Why? He was working. <laughs> it was working. Oh my Okay, one second, please. The reason there's uh, no wireless earplugs is that they were part of the uh, uh, tech McGannon today that we're having unrelated to the other things, presumably, but they just would not uh, connect. They said no. Okay, we now have a light <clears throat> on the encoding hardware capture device. And the uh, the number of cables that we had to sift through to get these headphones. Going. Oh, all of them, <laughs> all big bags of cables, yeah. trying to piece together some magic connection. Okay, we have them now. I am so happy. We'll bring them on and switch over to the proper thing. Welcome, John. I apologize. <laughs> Not a great way to start an interview by an apology <laughs> for the delay. And apologies to everyone out there. No problem. Most of the... Uh, can you move the mouse to the side off of John's nose? Yep. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know how that got there. Is there a mouse in here? Way off. Way down. Yeah. There. Get that mouse. Get your cat back exactly. out. Exactly. We need that mouse gone. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, John. Hey. Thank you for coming on to Zero Page Homebrew to talk about 
the uh, your new releases, uh, both ends of the spectrum. One, a new release that nobody's seen except PRGE attendees, and the new release of your box game, yes, newly put into the Champ Game Store. Yep. Tutankham Arcade. Yeah, that people have probably seen too much of. <laughs> <laughs> Not enough. It's an amazing, amazing game. We've got our um, dual stick controller from Ed Ladin, so we can play it properly. Oh, excellent. Play it as it's intended. Okay, that cat needs to get out of here. No, you calm down. Calm <laughs> calm down. down. <laughs> Everyone I'll can see cat. him too. You just calm down. Um, but you're going to get so. banned for life. Banned Let's for life. Bad for life. Get into it. Um, let's talk about PRG. Sure. How was that for you? Um, it was very. Was it a lot it, of fun? It was tiring. It was fun though. It was a different show today. Um, and this year it was. Uh, it seemed to be like twice yeah. as big as it was last year. So. It felt like. Yeah, the floor space was massive. Yes. Huge. It was huge. Yeah. So, but it was a lot of fun. It was great seeing a lot of people. A lot of. Uh, um, People coming by to visit the Champagne's booth. I get to go visit Al down at uh, the Atari Age booth. Obviously, I saw you guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, visited with the Audacity guys too. They were just uh, two booths away from us, so it was uh, it was it was really good. Saturday was a very uh, steady stream of people. Um, we weren't yeah. open on Friday. Um, they did it. So some of the floor was open on yes. Friday. Some of it opened on Saturday. You're part of the Saturday opening. Yes, exactly. So um, so Saturday and Sunday. Was that a so that was that a good thing or a bad thing? Because three days is it's too much. A lot. Yeah, I would. It's a lot to work. Yeah, I would say it was two days was perfect. I gave us all of Friday to really set up. I came in on Thursday night, so it was good just to be able to relax a little bit. You know, we didn't really relax that much, but it was better than last year where you know, I got in about six at night. Nathan had already gotten there and set up most of the booth. And we had till ten to get yeah. everything ready, so we had four hours as opposed to you know sixteen hours. So it was a it was a huge difference. Yeah. So. Yeah, a little bit more relaxed. That's that's good. So the Friday gave you time to set up, and you got in early. Yes, enough. but you were you were dead tired. You weren't able to come out and party with us. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Which I, I don't blame you. A big party, but uh, yeah, I'd go on. I actually <laughs> met with uh, Matt over at Atari. Um, at uh, nice. It was the same bar that we went to last year. The uh, that rooftop one. Um, you know, right across. Oh yeah, yeah. At the at the hotel. Yeah, so we were yeah. talking about some secret Atari plans. And then, um, <laughs> then I went back. My uh, my son came um, with me this year, which was great. He loved it, and uh, and obviously my that was awesome. Yeah, my brother Paul was there as well. So, but by the time I got back You're... to the uh, room, they were already asleep, and it was like 7 p.m. So it was like, that's when you texted me. I went, well, actually, sleeping sounds like a good idea. So yeah, <laughs> so we just crashed. Yes, and, yeah, because yeah, it's also a you yeah know, the, um, time change really uh, kicks in for us too. It's three hours earlier for us so or later whatever so oh my god you're up against a wall wherever you yes, turn yes exactly <laughs> just couldn't wait but it was it was a great time great to see everyone i'm looking forward to it next year as well so and it was great uh finally meeting your son your your son is one of your biggest testers yes for games yes he's the one that if anyone thinks that wizard of war or uh Robot War is too difficult. You can blame Joey because we're the ones we're the ones <laughs> that do all the testing. He loves the, the co-op game, so uh, um, it was great. And he he went with me. We went to the Long Island Expo uh, this year, which is in Long Island, New York. It's, it's a drivable um, commute for us. Yeah. And he loved it. He said, "Dad, can I go to uh, Portland?" I went, yeah, sure. I went, bought him a ticket. And, and nice. He was, he, was, he was great. He was very uh, very. And you and you put him to work yes, he's very, uh, <laughs> in your booth. Yeah, he's very focused, <laughs> methodical, and uh, he loves to play. He, and he was playing scramble most of the time he had a break trying to get to the end. And he never did make it. He almost made it once. I came over and went, oh, you're going to make it, Joe. And he exploded when he after he uh, shot the final <laughs> bell. So, uh, but uh, we'll get it next year, though. So. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I guess he'd be really good to have around the booth because he can play. He knows all the games. Yes. He can play them all really well, making them make them look like uh, uh, easy easy to play, <laughs> even on the hardest levels, yeah. and uh, get people in to uh, check out the games. Yeah, he can also attract the younger crowd too. You know, all those hip uh, sayings and you know, hey, look, a young guy is playing <laughs> Atari. Right. Right. Maybe we should try it too. So, uh, um, that's yeah, true. So, so yeah. That so uh, yeah, it was great to have him. So he's looking forward to next year too as well. So, um, and. You not only had a booth with your games, there's now a line of new games, 
Champ Games present. Yes, Nathan came up with that. That you brought on board. Yes, yes, that was great. Um, Obviously, we all know what happened with uh, Atari uh, last summer. um, Affected me as well. Um, So at that point, for those who don't know, you know, obviously uh, we had a decision how to um, develop or publish our games. We took on the publishing duties ourselves, which in itself was a huge uh, undertaking. But once that was settled and um, things were going pretty smoothly, uh, we had some developers reach out to us, asking if there was a way we could get republish their game. So we reached out to Al and you know the artists and everyone and got all the OKs yeah. and um, you know blessings that we needed. And uh, you know that was quite an effort too. Nathan spearheaded that. And, um, just yeah. like last year's publishing duties, this Champions presents the first time. You know, just getting the whole infrastructure ready for whether it's, you know, royalties, uh, um, adding things, uh, yeah. you know, working with different artists and uh, Nathan having to, uh, just, you know, uh, work with that, um, with the printers and everything right. like that, and even the games themselves. Because you, you had to re kind of update the box yes. art a little bit, the manuals, I'm sure, as well. Get them all printed, yes. too, again. Yep. And, and then right? the games themselves had to be updated. The developers are great helping with that. I actually worked oh, on yes. I actually updated Juno first myself, so I had to, you know, I put in the Champions logo and things like that. But uh, Tom, right, because there were splash screens, I think, that needed to be updated as well on some of them. Right? Yes, exactly. And uh, and yeah, TJ yeah. Um, made changes to Star Castle. We had uh, Silvio uh, update Ruby Q. Even that one, we actually nice. changed the color of the box. He was um, excited about just having uh-huh. it different from yellow to be green. And uh, and, and right. Carlos updated um, Shard of the Box at the end. So. Uh, um, so let's let's go through the list of them. So Ruby Q, Stratavox, Star Castle Arcade, the end. Yes. Uh, and did you say Juno first? And Juno yes, first. Exactly. There we go. Juno first. So we really said last. Exactly. So Juno last. <laughs> <laughs> Juno last. Yeah. So so really great lineup of uh, uh, games to start. Yes. To start, are there more? Well, well, are you planning some we'll more? We'll see. You know, we have our own stuff yeah. to do. We, there's, there's some on the table that we're discussing with uh, certain developers, but you know, it's a uh, yeah. it's a long road. And Silvio will uh, um, attest to that. I mean, he re- reached out to me right after PRGE last year, and it took us all his time just to, you know, work right. with uh, David Exton. Um, he was he was great. He was very responsive to update the uh, um, artwork. He also uh, and some of the um, we wanted to uh, make things consistent. So some games that didn't have posters, we made posters for. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, so everything is is consistent from that standpoint. And then working with the developers themselves, obviously. And Al is very very helpful. There were some games like Sarcastle yeah. Arcade where the uh, artwork was you know hidden, or he only had the only copy, and you know so he worked with us to get oh, us okay. that. And so uh, I think That's I great. think even June at first it didn't even have a box, if I recall. Um, or, oh. or at least yeah so we did that as well so so yeah it was, it was yeah. a lot of work there that's why we only released one game this year we were very uh and when things started i had to plan for at least five games we were working on and hopefully we get two of them done but you yeah. know and, <laughs> um <laughs> spiders time yeah. marches yeah. on and all of a sudden it's prge and like ah. yeah exactly and prge <laughs> was a month early this year or three weeks early ne- next year i don't know if you've already seen yeah. that they've already pu- published the dates that's uh the seventh October seventeenth to the nineteenth. So, so yeah, we get a, a little bit more yeah, time. We get a few more weeks, but anyway. So yes, yeah. Spiders was originally supposed to be done and uh, released by then, but you know oh, I didn't wow. get it playable. Okay. Like even Nathan didn't even see it till the day I was leaving, and I was the only one that saw it. <laughs> Joey did the testing in the plane. That was basically how that one worked. So, wow. yeah. So. <laughs> It always seems to be that way. No matter how hard you try, there's always right to the line, right to the last yes, minute. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And the good news, that was just a whip. Last year, I was actually making changes to Turbo and Elevator Agent on the plane because that was just crazy. The whole, <laughs> um, you know, without Nathan's help, that wouldn't even happen. But still, what I was working, what I had to do just to get the publishing stuff, which wasn't, as, you know, about a tenth of what he had to do, that took up almost all my yeah. time. So it's like, okay, wait, I actually have to finish a couple of games all that. So, <laughs> um, so, but this one was nice because it was just like, well, it's, it's just a demo. If I don't show it to anyone, that's fine. It's not the end of the world. So, and Tutankham was finished a long time ago, like yeah. almost like uh, six weeks before. So, that's the way we want to do well, it. That's, that's the way we're going to do it going forward. So, yeah. And you also recently announced um, another game. I did. You're going to be releasing Zevia. Oh yes, yes. Chris Walton, you're. It's not, a, and it's not a Champ Games presents 
game, you are uh, collaborating with Chris Walton to release yes. Xevious. Yes. So that's exciting. Yes, exactly. So he, um, you know, I, Chris doesn't, uh, he's obviously int very interested in getting it released, but um, he's short on time. So we, um, since the release with Juno first went fairly smoothly, um, um, we decided, or he, he asked if it, it would be something I'd be interested in to champify. I think that's something we've made. That's yep. in the, that's in the dictionary. Yeah, it's in the video. Yeah, yeah. it's in the dictionary now. <laughs> Champify. So yeah, champification of games, yeah. if you if you will. <laughs> exactly. So you know, most I know he had stopped working on it because he had already hit the 32k barrier. Um, okay. So we're looking to extend that to 64k, and then once we do that, we're going to add all the champ menus like we usually do, add a challenge mode, and then there's Great. also the. Um, that final boss uh, and or Genesis spaceship that needs to be added as well. So, so we'll, we'll fill yeah. up that second 32 K fairly quickly. And, um, so that'll be, it's a, it's a big game with a lot of graphics and backgrounds yes. and level information. Yep. Yeah. It's yeah. a fairly large game. So, and the ship. yeah, so I already have this, the code and, um, I have on the, my to-do list. So we're basically going to aim to get that going after we get spiders, Spiders is actually, we're trying to not fast track it, but Dave Drives has already signed on to do the uh, um, artwork and what he's done is uh, looks looks great so far. So, um, oh, you nice. know, so we're trying to get that and the manual going. That's always the toughest part is getting that going and hand it off to Nathan so he can start, you know, incorporating that, getting that so we can have that behind us so we have focus on these other games once they, they come up. So it's, it's going to be a busy year, absolutely so, but... The Xevious, yeah. um, Nathan's doing the artwork on that one, so um, so nice. that'll help. Um, so we just have the game yep. that to do, and uh, and then we have uh, so, a couple others. So we keep on. Sorry. So uh, your timeline now. Uh, I'm guessing you're not going to be strictly going with PRGE every year for releases. Are you going to do staggered ones? Yeah, the or the real um, um, st uh, sticking point on that is that. You know, we'd love to be able to release games one at a time. The cost is not cost effective at all because the printer we go with, oh, okay. we get a huge discount if we can hit a thousand units. Um, so right. it sounds like a lot, but it's really not. We can print like, hey, 50 of Galagon, 50 of this. You have like 20 <laughs> copies, yeah. there you hit it pretty quickly. And, you know, something like Tukum oh, okay. we usually print a lot more of. So we had to wait until we had all the. Um, um, games set up in the printing all done for the new five titles because those are the ones we're printing more of um, before we hit that number right. so we printed in july so but we're hoping if we okay. do like xevious and spiders that's 500 right there i know i'm being yep. very uh, um optimistic about spiders selling 250 copies but i love it i well, buy let's... i buy 249 myself but, um, <laughs> but well you will be yeah, yeah, actually but, won't yeah, you and of course that 250 <laughs> that's something that over the lifetime this, we don't expect to sell that in a year or two but you know it's just so we have it right um so that's it's good for back catalog and bringing out and just having it available it, pretty much all exactly because yeah. what happened this year we ran out of the titles during the summer or galagon we ran uh, out um and we had you know yeah. um gorf we ran out robot robot war and then we were down to one or two mappies and everything was wow. really down to nothing so i had actually had to take it's good and bad yeah it was good but then you had to take everything <laughs> out of the store so then i put it back and yeah then, um, yeah so we're trying to avoid that try to keep a stock but with anything you know it's like it's it's not it's fairly expensive to to do this it's not like hey a couple hundred dollars to print it's like thousands and thousands of dollars i'm not I'm just just so yeah. people know that's that's why it's it's all about cash flow and just say hey, we need the money to actually do this but you don't have it because you have to sell more games than the, so it's uh it's 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 a business right. side i'd rather not deal with but being a publisher i kind of have to now so um yeah well for for the games that you've re uh reissued i guess would be the word yes. uh um they're they're actually different from the original releases so all the collectors out there yeah i'm hoping <laughs> the hardcore collectors they, they are a variant i guess yes yeah they are i mean yeah the roms are actually different so the cartridges are are all that's, different and, that's and true. The, the printing's yeah. actually different but yeah so we we bought yeah. a small supply of those because i didn't really know what to expect but surprisingly um yeah i silently added everything to the store this week and i'll explain why i did it silently okay um yeah. and there's like selling all of them are selling like hotcakes. It's like uh, wow. so people were either missed out in the last chance sales or their collectors yeah. 
or you know this is the first time they've that's the thing we've been part of this for so long you know juno first has been out for 16 years oh so there's people that didn't even know it existed so you know because what happened well i think of the I think the last chance sale really perked up a lot of people into, especially when it was over, they're like, Oh no, it's gone forever. I want it now. And that's what happened with Ricky and Vicky for the 7,800. Yeah. They had, they printed 500 copies of it. Mm -hmm. It took years to sell. Mm -hmm. And as soon as it was sold out, just dozens and dozens of people going, Oh, I want a copy. I want a copy. I want a copy. Where's the reprint. Where's the reprint. Yeah. They go on eBay for hundreds of dollars. Yeah. I, I heard and, that was and, going on with Juno first. Like someone reached out to me and said, thank right. you so much for reprinting Juno first. Because now on eBay, it's cost you $200 for a copy of Juno first. So, Oh, oh my um, God. Yeah. so, and it's an amazing game. Yeah, Juno it, first is one of my favorite shooters on the 2600. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. that and star castle is one of my all time favorite arcade games. Um, and, yeah. um, Ruby Q, obviously, Cooper um, clone. Oh, that's that's amazing yeah. as well. So we got three great games. It goes games. well beyond well beyond Cubert with so many extras. Yeah, exactly. That he's added. Yeah, in. and the, the, yeah. those are games I know of. And then this um, Stratavox and at the end, and I'd never heard of those, but um, Carlos super obscure. Game. It's just like you know spiders and those type of games that I try to introduce. Just gonna say, yeah. So it fits in yeah. good with our obscure <laughs> but great shooters. Um, so uh, the, those are those yeah. are selling fairly well as well so we're we're happy that we did this because worst thing would have been we spent all this time money and effort and get all the developers hyped yeah. up yeah we're going to put your game in there and you know one sale trickles in every couple months so <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know it, so that's good yeah. that's good so yeah so yeah. It, was, it was great news so yeah so the reason why i did a silent release because uh as we know fred is uh he supplies all the bullets ah. and he's been just flat out with like a thousand things he was like up all night his, at prge he, Exactly. Yeah. His soldering, a soldering iron is now one with his yeah, arm. Exactly. Right? Yeah, all his fingers are fixed. <laughs> he can just do four at a time now. So uh, <laughs> Ten soldering irons. Exactly. So, yeah. you know, I was a little, uh, you know, I, I was probably a little too uh, um, anxious to say, hey, you know, right after PRG, we're going to throw these things in the store. Cause people are pushing, <laughs> not pushing for it. Everyone's right. excited about it. And they, you know, that's, that's great. Um, so, yeah, but then I, is, you know, yeah. I heard back from Fred and he said, you know, he's going to do his best to get us some board. So we had a few, so we were able to add some games to the store, but it was sold out really fast. So everything's on back order. I don't really like yeah. to do that unless I know things yeah. are in transit, which they are. So anyone who did, yeah. you know, place a back order, this is only since yesterday, um, those yeah. games will be, you know, shipped out by next week. So it's still going to be a fairly, oh, fairly right. quick turnaround instead of, three that's days good. maybe a week so um we're, we, oh that's not bad yeah, at usually, all. i mean but people people there's a lot of you know with the era of amazon and single day delivery yes. people are very very they they've high expectations yeah, now me too so yeah, uh, usually i'll only little, buy you know i've gotten to the point where i'll only buy things where i get it like the next morning you know so like you know if you really need it so, yeah so and me too. I, I usually don't go for pre-orders unless it's something that I know is in such high demand. Yes. That that's all there's going to be is a pre-order. Yeah. And it's usually with retro gaming stuff, I find, yeah. because it's all very hobbyist type of stuff. Um, so the, the run numbers are limited. Yes. Like, you know, 200, 300, and that's it. And they're not going to make them anymore after. It's like, yeah, that project's done. You didn't get one? Oh, oh well. Yeah. It's over. Exactly. And yeah, so, yeah, we, we, we don't plan on limiting any of our releases. And we certainly try to, in my in my eyes, there's a huge difference between a pre-order, which means, you know, the game isn't even yes. available and they're still making it. You're still waiting for this and that. And a back order where yeah. we actually have it. It's just we're waiting for parts to come in to continue. So, yeah, because we, I've had people before say, hey, you know, can I get on the pre-order list for Spiders? It's like, no, I don't do, you know, I won't accept any money or anything for anyone until we have the game in yeah. hand everything printed and everything is either on the way or in house so it's uh you know the only reason yeah. I did this. Either, either way either either way people are going to be hounding yes, you but exactly. I, I think that's a really safe safe way of doing yeah, it because it, 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 it's just like yeah it, it's out when it's yeah out. it gets stressful on my end too because i don't like to see orders pile up because uh yeah. you know it's just <laughs> and you you don't have any bosses breathing down your neck to give it get a christmas release out or anything so it's just done when it's no, done exactly and i feel better doing yeah. this because now people will actually get it for christmas you know last year because of timing i had to wait till right. december 1st and even then i was still waiting for boards from fred 
which didn't come till right. the middle of, of December. But I had I put it in there so people could order it. I'd have everything prepared. Yeah. And I could just fill them, and then I was filling stuff, yeah. you know, on Christmas Eve, which uh, which I want to avoid <laughs> Not... here. So um, you know, so hopefully uh, yeah. we'll have all this stuff settled before you know in a week or two. So at least the mad rush. You know, there's always mad rush in the beginning. So. Yeah, and I and I, somebody in the la last our last stream chat reminded me of how um, I think possibly Kenner dealt with the Star Wars toys in the first year the movie was out. Yep. Kids only got a piece of cardboard oh. in their stockings <laughs> because they didn't have any toys ready for oh, for Christmas. I like that idea. And I mean, like we, bad idea. It, <laughs> yeah, you could sell them pieces pieces of cardboard, very much like the Amico, yeah. right? You just sell sell them empty boxes. <laughs> yeah, I could do that. I got plenty of those. With, so yeah, the, the promise. Yeah, yeah, the box stuff. We all the printing stuff was has been here since uh, or available since uh, <laughs> August. So we've been there. You go ahead of the game with that. So. <laughs> Oh, and Dark Descent said the early bird kits are worth thousands now that include no figures. Mm -hmm. That's hilarious. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, and before we get into introducing Spider's Arcade, I had a question from, I think, Facebook or something, um, somewhat related to releases um, from Matt, <laughs> Crazy Cat, <laughs> Matt Calvert. Oh, yes, I know uh, Matt. Very said he well. went. Okay, so he was bugging you at your, at your booth saying, right? <laughs> you got it. I wish they'd do 7800 stuff too. They said, don't count them out. Yeah. Maybe you can, was that like just a little tease for, for him to get him to go away? Or are you like seriously considering 7800? Because you've, you've never dealt with 7800 games, if I remember correctly. Yeah, you've no. never made a 7800 game. No, you've never released a 7800. Yeah, no, uh, I probably, I mean, I'd like to. <laughs> But it's the, the, yeah. the um, ramp up to that would be. I just have so many things on my plate as far as champ games is concerned that doing that yeah. would basically just put me out of, you know, put champ games on hiatus for six months at a minimum. <laughs> and uh, so we don't want that, Matt. Yeah, Matt. Exactly. No, no, no. Just, you know, unfortunately, <laughs> I've kind of grown um, very fond of my game engine that I've, you know, tuned for the last. Right which now is coming up on 19 years, which is hard to believe. Wow. So I just, yeah. it's just much easier for me just to use that. I mean, I'm not against 7,800 games. I think it's wonderful. And honestly, I think two or three years ago, it probably would have been a good idea to say, hey, let's venture to that. It's a kind of new territory. But in my opinion, yeah. 7,800 is blown up. I mean, there's so many developers oh, now. Obviously, what, you know, Bob paved the way for that and people have yep. followed his footsteps and, you know, the, uh, the amount of amazing games to be released for that is just staggering in my opinion so oh, i would just huge. be like uh, yeah you know i i think champ games their niche our, our niche i say there but you know it's, um <laughs> you know it's really pushing the 2600 that's you know i've said this yeah. a million times before you know i'm i'm a developer and an engineer first and then i happen to like games at the same time so um yeah being able to push the 2600 is satisfies that engineer in me and then, um, yeah. you know, making the games obviously satisfies the gamer as well. So it's uh, not to say 7,800 yeah. isn't challenging because it is challenging, but um, it's just something about, I never, I know this is going to be sacrilege, but uh, I'm not, I've never been fond of the 7,800. It's probably just how <laughs> I was introduced to it. You know, I got one yeah. in the mid 2000s or actually maybe mid 1900s. Yeah. I went to, I drove to Orange, Connecticut, which is about a couple hours away. All right, new age Atari thing came home and I just, the sound just still, still. I wake up in a cold sweat, screaming. That's you know the sound of Donkey Kong. It just it was so bad. I went, this is. I'd rather play the twenty six hundred. And that's uh, yeah. And you know this is yeah. The release of the seventy eight hundred was yeah, pretty it was rocky. Botched, but, yeah, uh, the games themselves. Yeah. Just, I just had no affinity. Old, yeah, I had no affinity. Tired. For them, and, uh, it's amazing what they're doing yeah. for it now because obviously that's what they should oh, have done. Yeah. If they would have had these games back then, it would have been. You know, it actually could have competed with the NES, in my opinion. But uh, oh, um, very it just seems so. like they took the short, you know, the the shortest route to a supposed success, and it, it was just, it just felt, it yeah. felt, it felt cheap to me. But um, obviously, the released late, no included pokey, yes. old old game releases from arcade games that have been out for half a decade almost yes. at that point. Exactly, and, yeah. and the, yeah, and the, the new games just really weren't 
anything to be impressed no. about either. So anyway, that, that was. But this is the era for 7800. Yes. This is the actual release yes. that should have happened. Exactly. Now. It's, it's amazing. So, yeah. you know, so good for them. And, you know, uh, maybe someday, yeah. you know, honestly, if I do anything besides the 2600, yeah. it'll be the 5200. Because that's the that's a system I personally loved as a, as a kid. The one I always wanted. I mean, I have one wow. now, but, you know, it's not the same as, you know, having to go over to your yeah. friend's house and play there so they they show up okay yeah. now you gotta go home um so you know, that's what... well you can jo join ryan whitmer in making uh 5200 games then he's pretty much holding down the whole fort for the 5200 yeah exactly so that and, obviously, and what i started off doing um 8-bit development on uh my 800 um atari 800 so actually return to that and write something not in basic and really exploit that hardware and you can do that at the same time yeah. that would probably be the yeah. one i would actually be most interested in doing so but right so sorry matt you know that's uh the best i can say at this point so uh 1700 is <laughs> yeah. a distant oh, he's in the fifth. chat so yeah. he's fine yeah. with it he says i'm not disappointed it was just a thought yeah, 1700 is a yeah. distant fifth you know beside behind the uh, vectrex <laughs> Yes, yes, <laughs> that's what you got to do. Go for another unique draw on the fly type system. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's stuff for yeah. real. Yeah, that's my that would be my second choice for developing too, <clears throat> beyond the 2600 is the 7800, uh, the Vectrex yeah, because of its absolute uniqueness yeah. in the world of uh consoles. Yeah, I, I have yeah. a Vectrex, I wish I really wish they would have finished the uh color Vectrex. I don't know if you've ever seen the, the oh. prototype of that, that would have been astounding. Yes. Because Personally, my, my favorite game amazing. growing up in the arcade, or some, most of them were the color vector games like Tempest and Make yes. Havoc and Black Widow. And I always thought those games, like, and Star, Star Wars, uh, you know, just so many great Star uh, Wars color vectors. Oh, vector yeah. yeah. But anyway, mm -hmm. that's in a different, maybe some geek or nerd or <laughs> engineer will call Somebody them. Somebody will do it. Yeah, make color vector. That would be amazing. So, but. Yeah, I, I doubt it because it's a CRT yes, exactly. and those are hard enough to make. And <laughs> oh boy, but I have seen videos of color vector homemade or oh, a converted Vectrex yes. using the the intensity of the light yes, I, for I, the for the range of color. I saw that as well. It was amazing, um, but unfortunately, yeah. it's, a, it's more of a hobbyist. Thing, it's a pipe so, dream. Yeah, so yeah, so that ship is sailed. So <laughs> best we can do is uh, yeah. 2600 120 colors on that so. <laughs> that's plenty of colors yeah. that's a lot of good colors so let's get to the main uh uh main event here yeah the i wouldn't spiders say that. So, Arcade. yeah apologies up front you know i as i told you in the, the email i sent i was working on it right up to the end as i always do trying to oh that's fine this, we want uh, the latest so. and greatest i'm sure everybody wants the the well, the newest version this is fresh off the press yeah i, I it? tested it on hardware it didn't roll that was the biggest problem i writing things on a plane you don't get to see if it actually rolls right. in hardware until you're at the pr you know at prge putting it into the uh <laughs> system in front of 20 people it's like oh okay you just have to adjust the vertical <laughs> exactly. fold right <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I was able to fix it there. Then uh, I made some changes here. Then some other just minor um, bug fixes. It's really basically the same um, version of that PRGE, but just experimenting okay. with some things. Because, uh, um, but anyway, why not? Yeah. So, <laughs> so we can get into that. We can talk about the history and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, people can let's do that. Answer the question: Why spiders? It's funny when I asked them why? Um, why spiders. When I sent it to us because this has actually been in the works for probably a year and a half as far as like discussion and then proof of concept and then um right i sent uh um a uh message to nathan that's usually how i introduce things and uh the title was along came a spider and then i said oh you no know, <laughs> i've been thinking about my, uh, making this game blah, blah blah and nathan's reply was checks calendar not april fools what is this <laughs> oh no <laughs> oh no so um in his defense the uh you know the arcade game has had some limitations and, and some annoyances that you know we've we've decided to uh try to uh, resolve here in the uh you know so we're making spiders we're also trying to take away some of those um annoying pieces of the arcade game that uh that he didn't like and i didn't like either i just i guess i tolerated it right. more than he did so but he he has well, played he has let's... played this one and he he thinks it's much better so, so. he likes this yes. one okay. one thumb up okay so let's let's actually first take a, a look at the arcade version um, and then we're gonna look at 
the t the only two home console versions ever made of spiders. Uh, do you uh, have the uh, the portable one, the Entex spiders? Ah, yes. Oh, yes. I I don't have it, but we have a okay. video of it. <laughs> I I would like it. It looks really really cool. I played really cool. that as a kid. I loved it. Uh, but it was really really cool. But uh, anyway, so yeah, it's oh it's nice. It's very obscure. I mean, obscure arcade game, obscure everything. But yeah. Uh, yeah, so let's uh, let's take a look at Spider's Arcade for a second here. And uh, you can tell us a little bit about... Why Spiders? Your, why Spiders? Yeah. What Did you play this in the arcade? Yes, I did. Um, I, I grew up in a small town in northeast Connecticut, which I actually moved back to a few months ago, so... I can see the house I grew up in out my door. I'm not, I'm <laughs> wow. not kidding. So, um, wow, this is the geez. house I wanted to move in when I was a kid. So when I came on the market, I bought it. So, oh wow, oh, that's geez. cool. Well, that's really old, awesome. 117 year old Victorian with a lot of problems, but a lot of love. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. It's a fixer. Yeah, a unique fixer, <laughs> exactly. So, but anyway, so um, I went to um, in 1980. Two actually it would have been eighty two because I yeah. remember I was a freshman in high school. On my way home, I would stop at. Yeah, you know, obviously back then there was a lot of arcades around, even in the small towns. And this particular yeah. one had spiders in it, which I thought it was a really cool game. And, you know, back then we didn't have the internet telling you that this game is obscure. You're a loser. You know, um, <laughs> you, know, you think, hey, if it's here, it's going to be everywhere else. So this is going to be a great game. You know, so I'm playing it. You know, my buddy and I, Dennis. Um, same guy that designed Mountain Raider for me. That's just a plug for that game. Um, you know, we'd go there, we'd play it. My brother Paul came down. Um, I always enjoyed it. And then it wasn't until years later, I was like, I never actually saw that game again. Whatever happened to that game? Uh, it wasn't until yeah. Mame came out that I saw it. went, oh, now I remember this game. And then by that time, you figure out this really was obscure because I never did see it anywhere else. Um, and then, yeah. obviously, uh, the killer list of video games, whatever they call it, the arcade museum tells you that's very rare and stuff like that. So, so that, that's where, where yeah. you found out. But um, anyway, I went to where the arcade was just yesterday because there's a pizza place right there, and it was it's now a barber shop of all things. But I did peek in there to see if the spiders were still there. And it's not. So, um, <laughs> oh damn, they got rid of it. What the hell? <laughs> exactly. Where is this thing? It's rare. Um, <laughs> But anyway, so that's so, that's kind of my history behind it. I've always enjoyed it. Um, again, maybe most of it's relying on nostalgia. It's a cool shooter, um, but yeah. uh, I think it's uh, a good fit for the 2600 because it is, uh, you know, pick up and play, very easy to play. Um, and with Champ's game's uh, history of doing things like challenge mode and things like that, I think it's something that can be expanded upon um, and, you know, make... Know, make the game a little more uh um the longevity of yeah, exactly playable Ex extended exactly yeah. so and plus you know some there were some annoying things obviously uh, in the arcade where there's a lot of pauses between the game and stuff like that that need to that kind of take away from it that uh you know i've taken care of in this one where you can press the button to skip through s screens and stuff like that so and also in the arcade oh, um, and you can still do this on the my game is that. Uh, um, you had to press the button every time you wanted to fire. There was no hold down the button to fire. So uh, your thumb would be like uh, killing after like level four. So this one, you can just hold down the yeah. button. But if, for those arcade oh, um, masochists, I mean purists, you can you can <laughs> flip the uh, um, difficulty switch to A, and then it'll lose Good. single shot. So you have to release it. So you can still play it like the arcade. Because um, I know people would complain if they didn't have uh, the original. Yes thumb destroying finger destroying <laughs> yeah. constant presses like yeah. there's a couple arcade games that i really 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 love um that don't have auto fire and it's just why like you, you're pressing the button it only fires so often yeah, we you're pressing it faster than it fires so why not yeah i think we did the same thing with galaga as well or galagon we did that because in the arcade you have to press the button yeah but in our oh. arch you can just hold it down and then flip it so you, noisy too yeah you can, clack, clack, yeah, clack, so you can clack, clip clack. to a and do the arcade purist thing if you want to so so we're showing the emerson arcadia 2001 and and it's actually amazing that it was put on this system because there's only 47 games originally ever released for this system and they decided this obscure arcade game maybe was they, one of those 47 maybe they are from the same town yeah, yeah. 
well, maybe uh, a, <laughs> yeah. a buddy of yours uh, uh, worked for the Emerson Arcadia <laughs> and said, hey, Spiders is an awesome game. And everybody went, what? Uh, it, what? Spider exactly. what? Exactly. <laughs> Black Widow, you mean? It, no, it, Spiders. Yeah, yeah, everyone thought it was Black Widow. <laughs> so we actually changed the color of the web so it doesn't look like Black Widow anymore. But uh, That's that's um, good. <laughs> yeah, no, this, this actually looks pretty good, you know, what they did here. Yeah, it's like, a bit of flicker. Um, that might be due to the capture device that they're using, but yeah, it, there's a lot of flicker actually of the spiders coming down. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's, did uh, did you? It's uh, pretty brutal. Uh, well, you know that. Uh, did you find the uh, UA Still prototype spiders. that was just released a few months ago? No, UA. Yeah, you know, uh, I thought I thought I'd mention that to you. There was a uh, that was one thing. We we were working on this, and then a few months ago, I think in oh. February. They announced that they found three new titles, um, new prototypes. Oh, yeah. One of them was, was Spiders. Yeah, I, I saw that, but promptly forgot about it because it's not homebrew, so it's not really in my wheel. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's too much. So, so apparently they were going to release Spiders for the 2600, though at that point, that's when we changed the name to Spiders Arcade to differentiate itself from the prototype. Right. The prototype itself is terrible, in my opinion. I, I think it's, I think well, it's almost unplayable. Yeah. It seems like someone spent no more than a day doing it possibly and that's back then so, and the path yeah in the path they were going down wouldn't lead to anything good even if they kept going with it no i don't think so but you know obviously they yeah. it was a 4k game doesn't have the, the power of the arm i gotta say that i gotta say that <laughs> and i gotta say it like that too so um, yeah you yeah, do but um, yeah so i'm not blaming anyone but you know certainly there's obviously a much better shoot they, they could have done they could have done better in my opinion but, but even with 4K, yeah. it's not a cheating thing. It's like, even with 4K, <laughs> they could have done better than that. Um, uh, well, we won't get into yeah, that. We've exactly. hashed that But if anyone's wondering why Spiders are okay, because originally we were going to go with Spiders, S-P-Y-D-E-R-Z. Nathan and I do that uh, when we're chatting. Yeah. We throw a Z after everything. Apparently, that's how you sound cool. <laughs> um, Z V S. But Z. then once this came out, we went, yeah. okay, now we can piggyback off that to say if Spiders spelled correctly, arcade. So right uh and then for the last one we want to show is the um intex tabletop game, yes this is... which doesn't look too bad no exactly it was, it's, it's a lot it's... of fun I I, and i'm not sure if there's any web that happened no. or is it just a bunch of spiders just... that represent yeah it was spiders they didn't, they didn't do anything they couldn't do web in that thing so no, there's like they'd have to do a dual layer one or something. Yeah, um, yeah. and that gets expensive yeah. for doing that. But that 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 itself is very rare. That that uh, tabletop game. So very yeah. cool. Um, yeah, this came out in 1982. Uh, yeah, they had to change the gameplay, which is very very normal for a handheld. Yeah. Uh, I think Scramble is one of the best handheld yes uh systems. yeah that was probably That's one of really the, that, that one conversion. translated very well yeah it's it's yeah, nice they color did the too. scrolling yeah, it's like yeah we got different colors yeah that was uh that was great that one in uh yeah. galaxian i think it's very good yeah that one's a little bit more simple to translate yes. but yeah that's galaxian is very good as well okay so that's looped a couple times it's just a short video um so let's get uh to showing yours so this is an exclusive world premiere. Uh -oh. Okay, let's boot it up. I'm gonna untether myself for a second. Switch over things. That's why the wire, why the earbuds are so much better. Don't need to untether myself. Okay, so Darcy, sorry, I'll grab you that joystick. Oh, bye, cat. So go to today's date. And ZPH demo. Yeah, I should say, you know, usually when I uh, demo something here, everything's like ninety percent. Um, this one's probably close to like sixty percent in my in my opinion. So, 
Um, okay. Yeah, so we go, we got a way to go, ah. but it's uh, it's definitely a big play spider one. attacking. Yeah, <laughs> it's from the arcade, so Nathan did that. So <laughs> did a great job. And you've you've put a couple big full screen things into this game because I guess that's what was their gimmick in the arcade was massive. Yes. Massive uh, graphics on the screen. Yep, exactly. So, and if we go back to the title screen. Oh, look to the right, or up or oh. down. There you go. Spider's Arcade with the web. Yes. Very yeah, nice. So that um, interesting for a game that's very rare. It has like nine different marquees, which is <laughs> yeah. So we were looking. Oh, yeah, wow. you go online. Um, Nathan did the research, and um, this is one we decided to go with that seemed to be the best. Um, that's one, David. Um, Dave Drives is doing the artwork because the basing is uh, artwork off of. So um, I don't okay. think Dave has seen this yet because yeah. he sent me the new logo and I put it in. Um, and yeah, that logo is really yeah, nice. Yeah, we changed with the, the color, with the shade. Yeah, we changed the color of the web from blue to purple because um, Dave Drives is a. Uh, um, that's kind of the colors that he's going with with his artwork. It's like a '50s oh, okay. sci-fi vibe that he has going. Like, you know, I, I, very nice I, lots. Yeah, like, you know, it came from the swamp kind of stuff. Um, Spiders featured quite prominently in the 50s yes. uh, sci fi big creature attacking ants, yes, spiders, exactly. so, blobs. I don't yeah, know. so that was, I th <laughs> yeah, I think Nathan suggested that to him. And that uh, yeah. that um, um, inspired Dave to take on the. He goes, actually, it sounds pretty cool. So, with these artist types, you always have to inspire them. So, uh, so. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm just not inspired. I need a year break. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, so I, I did the sounds on this one as well. So, two games in a row. So, looking for a sound oh, guy. But um, I've actually, uh, I'm actually starting to enjoy doing the sound. So, uh, um, nice. Getting... So, what are the features of this game uh, that are implemented right now? Do you have the different. Um, levels of novice go through yeah that. we got oh, just, go just novice standard and advanced challenge is not there because challenge is going to be it's going to have more power-ups some more enemies um, you know right. things like that um we have, we're still hashing out some of the things that, that we're actually thinking of putting in a a boss like a you know that spider that oh. comes out at the beginning that real big yeah. one it won't get that big but yeah. you battle him at some point I think would be kind oh, of nice. cool, and he'll be spitting out small spiders. So, um, oh, yeah. So, ah. yeah, so it'll be like so you have to take care of the small spiders, and they're interfering with yeah, you exactly. shooting the big and, boss. And yeah. then um, taking a page from Joust, we may have in because what happens here is that um, the cocoon spawn egg spider eggs, which then spawn spiders. We're thinking of having like an egg right. wave kind of thing where there's spider Ooh. eggs flying around, and you have to hit them before they turn into spiders. And because nice. the whole point is in the games that. Not only have to destroy everything, you have to stop spiders from passing you because if too many pass you, your game ends. Um, so that would be a way okay. to, uh, you know, just mix up the gameplay so you're not just shooting at the web and all the time. You'd have egg wave and then you have yeah. a boss wave and then you go back to here. So right. we may actually that is good. Yeah, we may actually integrate that into the normal arcade. Um, you know, okay. Just because sacrilege. Yeah, because it's sacrilege. <laughs> but uh, no, I think people would enjoy yeah. it. So it's doesn't That's make good. sense. The only you know, leaving things for challenge mode is uh, always uh, double. And a lot of people don't move off of the normal mode, yeah. so they may not experience all and it's that. It's also a double edge. So you could have an arcade mode yeah. that gets rid of all those things. Yeah, so we'll see. Um, yeah. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. So, but so let's dive into it. Uh, just a premise uh, to uh, give uh, some info to Darcy. It is a shooter. Shoot all the things. I saw That's the pretty much it. Yeah. So yeah. So, so the demo. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, an expert yeah, now. So basically, there are a few things that aren't, aren't implemented. So there are a few um, cheats that you can do um, as far as um, when the wave starts. But we'll get into that. If you start exploiting okay. it, I'll tell you. I'll tell you to stop it. <laughs> but uh, no, you stop exactly. it. Exactly. But basically, what you're doing is at the beginning, um, a bunch of uh, um, seeds will morph into cocoons, and then then webs will start spawning out of that, and then um, spiders come out of those. <laughs> So basically, you just want to That's shoot awesome. the spiders before they pass you, and then as okay, the it already looks awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so it's already like better than <laughs> I know all the other ones that we saw. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Great explosion. That's awesome. All right. Yeah. Nathan did all the graphics for this, so he was surprised that for a game that he didn't like that there were so many graphics for it. But I, I think he did an amazing job. One of the. Um, oh yeah. One of the um, um, 
issues with the 2600 or just any home game is that um, this game was vertical in the arcade, so it's a much taller screen. Okay. So this one, yeah. uh, compensate, um, you, um, it's more spread out, so it's really more okay. left to right. So, but I, I still think it plays very much like that. Um, so basically, what each level has web power, which is basically the number of raccoons that will appear on the screen. Um, so yep. that's the bar up top. So once that runs out, okay. no more raccoons appear. But you see what happens is they start advancing towards you instead of uh, spawning new ones. Um, okay. And just so you know, okay, yeah, the, the web itself will change color to light blue when the web power is out. So you'll know at that point. So you see it's red right now. Um, once yep. it turns light blue, then you know that the web power, which is going down every time a cocoon appears, um, that no more okay. cocoons are going to appear, but they will still oh, they'll, they'll yep. start advancing mm. towards you. Um, okay. Yeah. So. Yep. I. See. Yeah. There's. They're coming down the yes, screen exactly. now. Yeah. Exactly. So no more spawn. But not spawning yeah, more. Yeah. And they don't. Okay. And it doesn't. The web only comes down now. It doesn't go up anymore. So. And then if you leave them long enough, a spider will hatch yes, from... Yeah, you see that? Yeah, so... Yeah, so... Uh... Oh, there's a big winky face. Very nice. Yeah, so... So, uh, how did... Uh, I mean, you'll be speaking for Nathan, but uh, a little bit. How did uh, you get the face? Did Was that completely redrawn from scratch? Yeah, I think... Or was there some... Nate, well, yeah, we took the image from the arcade, and Nathan, you know, I think he's online. He can explain the tech technicalities of it so but uh i think he did a great job it really captured that was for those oh yeah wondering why did i spend so much time playing this game is because that that woman <laughs> or girl or i don't know what you're supposed to say these days um will uh yeah. um, do something different every level so it's kind of like hey i wonder what she's gonna do next oh. level so uh that's, that's right kind of a, so it's a cheap uh carnival trick but it's uh, it was enough <laughs> it was enough to get me to spend you know a couple dollars on the game to uh right and how many uh different looks or animations that oh nobody exactly. knows exactly i can tell nobody. you there are 100 levels <laughs> i can, oh, I can wow. tell you something special happens on level 100 um, <laughs> okay but there's also you know it kind of follows what the arcade did but you know we okay. have uh we, we could put in our own unique uh um facial expressions if you wanted to, to to mix it up but so i think i've reached the difficulty level of first level standard <laughs> yeah <laughs> and and once in once in every thousand uh faces it's your face winking at the audience yeah it's Is, something like that did yeah. you program that in? um yeah no, that, that taken <laughs> or nathan's face yeah that would take <laughs> um yeah surprisingly it was like it was just 32k um, i was like you know wow. it's such a simple game this is going to be uh i'm going to be like wondering what to do with all this extra space and you know sooner um than i um what happened i've already run out of rom so I've, i'm already into optimization mode because even though i've compressed a lot of data something like that it's, it's, a, it's a fairly complicated game and engine underneath that's doing all this web stuff which there's still some right. bugs you see there's sometimes uh so many bugs. play field is, <laughs> play field is, spiders aren't bugs. sometimes there's play field left um on, on the screen oh. which shouldn't happen uh, i already know how to oh i see yeah, i already know how to fix it yeah. i just have to you know, free up to the wrong to... oh it's and it's oh, invulnerable and you too the, you can shoot the web yep but you have to shoot it many times no no you you can't destroy the web um you have to you can't no. oh. so you, oh the ones coming down i think you so, mean? yeah yeah i meant the ones coming yeah, down yeah, yeah those you can but the web itself you can't like the green Wow. Yeah, you can't shoot through it. So you have to pick away. Oh, at... so you have to, like, kill... I don't think I noticed that before. No, I didn't yeah. notice it either. I think you're at a higher level where it's just more of it now. Yeah, right? and I, I so should say... it builds yeah. towards you. Yeah, so it builds towards you. Keep on, sorry. Yeah, it builds towards you, and you have to uh, pick away at it to get up to the higher ones that are protecting itself. Yes. Oh, that's, that's cool. Yeah, okay. yeah, and eventually, when the web... Uh, you know, the web power... Um, runs out that the things that are on top will start crawling their way down to you so um, uh, yeah so they don't they won't stay on top but you know the web yeah the yeah. web Once in the arcade later. the web is much more um you know it's drawn with pixels so it's the resolution is a little bit less here so basically the logic you know webs yeah. can't cross ah! each other so what will happen is they'll uh, 
it'll wait um, until it has an opening. So sometimes webs get stuck. Mm. Um, Thank you, Dark Descent, for gifting a sub to Dale and Dorland. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So what are the different things? Uh, yeah, so there's the web in green. Yeah. There's the spiders, which are obvious. There's eggs, I guess. There's, are the pulsing? No, those are um, cocoons. <clears throat> cocoons, Yeah, so okay. you see every yep. so often. And that's where the spider so, comes yeah, from, so, right? Um, every so often you see that little blue thing. Um, I'm sorry, the stream is like a few seconds behind. So when I'm describing yeah. something, I'm, I've already missed yeah. it. But anyway, you'll see a, like it's a cyan mm -hmm. or a light blue. Um, yep. round um, um, spider egg that appears and then you yep. can shoot that for big points but if it hatches then it hatches a spider <clears level. throat> so some of the difficulty uh, for different levels will be that um, cocoon or that uh, um, egg will hatch faster you know as the levels get right um, and what are the things with trails coming down? That's just, that's the called game. the super web. Standard, yeah. So basically, that happens starting from level three on. Well, it all depends yeah. on what level you're on. So um, in the arcade, it starts on level two, but on um, standard, it'll be three, and novice will be four. And then there's um, the shield. I call them shields because they're basically shields that yeah. spiders. There's the um, light blue ones that fire when uh, um, spider spawn that I think starts at level four or five and then the red ones will spawn when you shoot it when you shoot a cocoon um, and those move a little bit faster so and then at the bottom okay. is the spider belt which right now is empty but as you saw in the last game as spiders pass you the spider belt will increase and depending on oh, what okay. level you're on um, it's, once if that fills in completely, your game ends. Oh, so you don't okay. want that to happen. So, and as you can imagine, what will happen is uh, the spiders themselves uh, start getting faster, um, more frequent. Uh, and then there's oh. actually some levels where they uh, where they avoid you. So right now they move towards you, but I just saw a screen roll. So, but, uh, yeah, yeah, I, Darcy saw it. Yeah, so it's it's early. It's a work in progress. Exactly. So <laughs> it's not done. But anyway, so um, depending on what I've level you're on, it, I think the lowest level challenge you can allow, allow 16 spiders to pass before the game ends, and then okay. and um, and it goes up to 32 for a novice. So the other two are okay. the arcade. I think is 20. And then um, standard is uh, 24. So, um, but you can reduce that spider belt by shooting the super web. So that line that comes down, you can shoot that. If you shoot that, oh, then your spider yeah. um, your uh, spider belt will decrease by one. So oh, and that okay. becomes so you do want to shoot that. Yes. Yeah, not just avoid yeah, it. And, yeah, okay. and that becomes almost imperative in the later levels because what will okay. happen is the spiders will avoid you instead of coming towards you. Because they're trying to get by you, um, and your game will mm. end really fast if you don't. So, because you can't, yeah. you can't stop them all. It's impossible. So the only way to reduce right. your spider belt is to let one. You know, if one passes you, make sure you hit the next Sorry, super web. So, I thought, um, I thought I... <laughs> the the explosion is of your ship is yeah, really incredible. Good. It's huge. Yes, I and do. It explodes like half half the screen. Yeah, I do That's need awesome. to fix that. Um, Right now, I don't know if you've noticed, it only you know, no matter where you are, it explodes in the center. So um, oh, okay. um, I do know how to make a you know so it can appear anywhere on the screen. It just uh, I haven't had time to do that. Okay. So so with the with the the missile web thing that just killed yeah, me. yeah. Um, <laughs> it's called the super super web it, super web okay super web. with the super web you were saying that. It reduces your spider belt. That green bar. Yes. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. And is that important early on, or is that just like. Uh... Um, well, you don't want it to be. Once you get to the harder levels, the spiders will start passing. Like I said, um, they'll start avoiding you instead of coming toward you. So they become very difficult to stop from passing you because okay. they'll run away from you. They change their behavior. Yeah, so if you enter that level and your spider belt is really high, your game's going to end really fast. Um, okay. And um, then during that level, you know, if one passes you, you better try to hit the super web so you maintain that a spider belt so it doesn't get too big. So, so we have um, a question from Thomas: Is the web only thirty-two pixels wide? Yes. Play field pixels wide? It seems narrow. Yes. Yeah, because I wanted to. Uh, well, it's a it's a narrow 
if it was the full screen, it would be, I think, too too difficult. Like the uh, the game oh, itself okay. is a vertical game, so I wanted to keep so, that. Too much horizontal movement yeah. to to maintain. Yeah, it. and plus not having to write those two extra play field registers allows me to do. You know, if you, I don't know if you no noticed stuff. that, you know, it's obviously single color sprites. Um, you have the web asymmetrical web on every line. Um, you have oh, okay. you have uh, uh, you know the missile. Um, I have to sh you yeah. know you have that super web which is drawn with a ball that has to shift every line. So to be able to do that, right. um, you know, it would have been some sacrifices. But yeah, it's yeah. not even a sacrifice. I think it's, it's better as a thinner, you know, it plays more vertical like the arcade instead of having the whole screen, you know, have the web be 40 pixels yeah. wide instead of 32. So, um, so the end, the end spider. Just want to jump in yeah. here while I remember the name of it while it was on the yeah. screen. The the end spider is like the last spider on the screen. It turns white or it comes out as yes. white. What what is the behavior of that? Because Darcy seems to be able to kill it quite quite easily. Yes, right now. Yeah, like. the arcade. Wait, wait, what? I think what he's saying is it must be too easy because Darcy has managed to <laughs> yeah, kill it. In the arcade, and it's therefore, very easy. that's a so problem. If you um, oh. You sure do dogpile on yeah, Darcy. Darcy's Darcy. doing awesome, actually. It's, a, it's, a, it's the hardest thing in the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in, in the in the arcade, it did basically the same thing, but it does. If assuming Darcy gets to a later level, um, it will yeah. try to avoid you as well. So, um, so it will become more difficult to hit. But some of the champ things I want to do. And actually, I saw it in that Entex, not the Entex version. What was the other version you showed us? The. Uh, 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 Arcadia. Yeah, the Arcadia one. Uh, yeah, even even yeah. they went um, above and beyond, and they have the spider actually avoiding you with a with a pattern. Um, so uh, you know we can do the same type of thing where you know the first few will be easy to hit, and then as it um, progresses, they it gets faster and avoids you, and then you can even put a pattern in there as well. So, um, but one thing that was also unique about Maybe it's not unique but about this game. At the beginning of each level, it shows that score because the score for everything that you kill changes per level as well. So, oh, okay. yeah. So, so I thought it was, was kind of neat. So that's why it shows every every screen. So there's sometimes where you know this, like the bonus showed on the screen. Yeah, one thousand. Oh, that's why you showed this screen. Yes. the interstitial. Exactly. Yeah. Um, right now it seems like so if you hit a seed, which you can't actually do. So when those little red things are expanding at the beginning. If you can hit one yeah. of those, you get like 60, it goes up to like 150 points. So, oh, yeah, so okay. for the cocoons, depending on what level they are, because some levels, once, when a new cocoon appears on the screen, it doesn't immediately start spawning a web. So if you hit it at that, at that stage, you get a certain amount of points. If it's, Which is to your best interest anyway, to yes. get, get them out of the way quick. Exactly. And then as a level two, um, when it's spawning a, a web, um, you also get more points for shooting it when it's a spider egg before it hatches a spider. Um, so yes, yeah, so there's a lot of uh, in the super web itself. Um, you can get a lot of points for that as well. So it's a, uh, I think it's a pretty cool game. Um, yes. One of the things I want to add, um, besides those extra levels I was talking about, the egg blade and stuff like that, to have things like a weapon power up that you could catch. Where if you shoot a um, right now Ooh. when you shoot a uh, cocoon, it destroys the web that's attached to it. Well, you could have a super one ah. that would actually go one level up where it would destroy that and then destroy any any cocoons that are also attached to it you know so um oh nice. yeah so just little things like that I have different um, enemies like a black widow or something like that um, kind of a callback to, you know, black widow game. <laughs> so what is your um you said it's sixty percent. You estimate right yeah, now. Yeah, probably at? seventy. Oh, okay. I mean, it's it's, it's close. Seventy. It's close. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's. Uh, it's. I mean, the the full game is here as far as what the uh, arcade can offer and all the levels in there. So. It's, uh, um. Yeah. Those super webs are uh, challenging to shoot. <laughs> Let's say they move all over the place. Yeah, I tweaked that right before I sent it to you. I probably made it a little difficult. So um, it's a little bit easier in the, uh, <laughs> the other version. But. Uh, I, I thought they were good. They're not bad. They, I thought they were good. They, they're wiggly they, they're enough a little to... easier to shoot at the beginning. Yeah. And then they're not like... You can't just get under them because they'll they dig around to get... I thought they were quite good. Yeah, maybe yeah. In, the, maybe in the earlier levels I'll, I'll have... That, that, that zig part is what I added in at the end. Because it was... Mm -hmm. um, 
maybe I'll just have it progress to that. So, um, uh, Nathan posted in the chat. I can't read it now, but uh, about um, doing. Does it say "Great game, thanks, John, for choosing this"? <laughs> it definitely <laughs> does. I, 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 word for word, what you no. said. Exactly. Yeah. Well, actually, um, Nathan. Defense, not to have to defend him. Right? He actually said he, he does. He does enjoy what what um, he's done so far with the game. So, and this came together. I was like, I was actually doubting myself at some point. Like, I'm not sure if this web's gonna work. It's too uh, the resolution's too low. Um, but yeah. And then that day before I left for PRGE, I finally got it working. I went. This actually feels like spiders. It's actually fun. So. Um, oh yeah. So. It's, it's it's a great shooter. There's yeah. a lot going on. Yep. Which is always, which usually in shooters is just like shoot the ships that are coming at you. But this one is like, you have to stop things from happening. Like the webs get all over the screen. There's multiple enemies with different attack patterns. Coming down. Yeah, it's it's very different than your average like space shooter. I'd say. I think so. Even though it is based kind of like on space shooters. Yeah, exactly. It's, oh my God, we're getting close. It's it's space shooters you're doing with good because you're, you're also fighters. having a conversation and you're doing very yeah. well. Yeah, so. yeah, I've had to learn to do that. <laughs> I used to not be able to play and talk at the same time to any good degree, but uh, it forced me to be able to play and talk now. Um, and and I think the webs translate really well because you're really you're really not concentrating on them as like detailed graphics or anything. Yeah. Um, you're you're looking at them as like a spreading virus on the screen almost. Yes, exactly. I, I, that's that's what I really liked about the arcade game. I thought it was I thought it was really cool. If you remember, at 1981, this seemed like really cool because you know it was, oh, before yeah. that I it's... played like Galaxian and Space Bears, which are both great games. But this is like so different in my opinion. And with with the yeah, they really went for the like filling the screen kind of look because yeah. there's just so much. A lot of other games are like very sparse. There's only a limited number of enemies. Um, maybe a star field, but this one is like, oh, oh my god, <laughs> who's that dude with glasses <laughs> and a beard? Nice ZPH special edition. I hope that doesn't go in the final version. No, <laughs> but that's she, she so was supposed funny. to wink left and wink right at that one, but uh, Nathan uh, put that oh. together. So uh, I was hoping you clear level five. Level five is very, very, very challenging. So I was like, okay, well, if he does it, we'll get to see. Uh... <laughs> oh, thank you so much. That's so hilarious. I, I've been immortalized digitally. Exactly. So. Um, in a game now. Oh yeah. God, it's hard to get these yeah, I, webs. Yeah, I had to take out really the, uh, the, uh, the end level uh, graphic to fit you in. So, so unfortunately, you probably won't make the the final release. But uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a, sa a a worthwhile sacrifice. Yeah. No, I, please don't put me in the final release. That's, yeah. That's just funny. I can say Nobody one, one, one thing that we is. did different than the arcade. Which, by the way, art um, advanced would be closest to the arcade as far as the difficulty because it's actually a fairly difficult arcade game in my opinion um but for standard give and it a go, then. one thing that nathan pointed out which is actually a, uh, something annoying is that when you get killed you have to redo the entire level all over so uh, but th uh. it's not we did do it so that there are checkpoints in the, in the way so that if um, a novice if you clear half of the level which means so if there's 20 cocoons if you kill 10 of them and they get killed yeah. then you'll only have to kill you'll start at 50 percent you'll oh okay. so if you know yeah. so if you're down to one and you get killed you still have to kill 10 but you don't have to kill 20. um and then yeah. the same thing there's also another checkpoint at 25 percent so um okay. let, uh, uh, kill so if you kill 50 if you kill five of them there's 15 left then you only have to start at 15. Um, instead of okay. 20. Um, and then um, standard, it only has a 25% check checkpoint. So that's, so, you know, if, there, if it was 40 to start and you killed 10 of them, if you got killed, you'd only have to kill 30 moving forward. So, uh, okay, I did that's see. Stop it. Yeah, so so that, that really helps because on advance, basically, you yeah. get killed yeah. on the last one. You can have cocoons. They can be up to 69 cocoons, which is 
which is a ton. I mean, to try to oh my try God. to survive that level, that was always the difficulty in the arcade. Is like just getting to the next level is so challenging. So, um, how many can be on the screen at a time? If you, say you have, you're up to like the 69 um, cocoons. Yeah, there's a max one. I think there's like it'll it just won't like the webs will just keep growing. If, uh, if okay. it hits a certain max, because the game would crash at that point. You think there's screen rolls now, if you had like, uh... but you can see, I think it's 20, maybe 32. Or... And how many spiders can be on the screen at the same um, time? As many as, as oh, yeah. it, but it, they usually fall off the screen pretty pretty quick. So, but uh, you know, they do. You know, you could in the later levels, it could be three or four at the screen at the same time. And, uh, there's only okay. one super web yeah, that can be on there. There's also as many, you know, those shields really pick up pace in the later levels too so it becomes it becomes crazy in the later level so <laughs> so anyone who likes shooters are going to love this game because yeah, it, it is, there's happening. no rest for the wicked so <laughs> uh, no not even on the early levels it's it's a lot going on you're yeah. maintaining pushing back this uh this web yeah so I, quite a bit yeah i think uh it's probably a little too difficult even i right before here i did try to tone down standard novice a little bit so i can um uh, i'll probably end up uh, making these a little bit easier because i still think they're a little too challenging yeah probably the the novice at least anyway because i was playing it and i kicked my ass to level six yeah it's and, level four. but i'm getting better now i'm on level five on advanced, yeah the thing is level is five and six they avoid you but then when it gets back to level one oh. they start um it does get back to where they start level four, you're gonna get to The super web seems to be going slower on this level. Does it pick up speed uh, during the the level? Um, because the last uh, level, the the super webs uh, were like just racing towards the. Yeah, level. it's probably a bug. I know. I was I was okay. quite, It should be going a little faster. So, well, that's probably good. It'd give you a little break. But um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, it is good. I'm not complaining. Yeah, honestly, I was it I was, was doing. Was um, brutal. I knew you'd be playing all the different skull levels. I was trying to throw that in yeah. the end. So it's, um, obviously, it's uh, you know, ha it's doing something. Having a slow down on a level um, could Sometimes be a good. really that could be a really good like even though it makes that level easier, it could make it could make it harder in general because then the next level suddenly is like ah it's back to the normal yeah yeah now. yeah i've played games where it's part of the game where you kind of get a break yes you kind of need it so. and, and it kind of kind of restarts but at a harder different i don't know yeah yeah so you do get a break sometimes yeah sometimes. so maybe we'll yeah so that's one thing is that i think the arcade game just ramped up difficulty really fast and then it became like unplayable and at some point it just becomes Faster. not fun if all you're doing is like <laughs> completely stressed out the entire time with spiders coming from every direction. Yeah. It's like, uh, good look at this. Let's, yeah, the webs are look hectic. super webs are fast again. Yeah, see there's tons of shields coming down. Um, oh yeah. There's yeah, a lot so, going on. <laughs> so maybe that was a happy accident. Give you a little break there. I don't know what got you there. What got me? Nothing got me. Ah, I hit a limit. <laughs> no, the uh, what your game's over, right? If you yeah. If the, uh, I didn't. If the spider, I didn't, we just didn't. The spark, we didn't oh, see what if the spider belt oh, opens up the game. Is. Oh, that's right. What, I was like, nothing hit me because up till this point, that hadn't been happening. Right. Yeah. yeah. So this that is was the first, the first time, time. That, that someone died from yeah, that. Yeah. Advance yeah. is, is okay. challenging to say the least. So. Yeah, yeah. 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 So now I next game I play, I would be watching that and going, okay, I really have to shoot the super super. Yeah. Webs. Or yeah. make sure the spiders don't pass you. Which, you know, once if you get them in the corner, you that shoot them. So it's. Uh, there, there were quite a few coming down on that. Yeah, level, so, so yeah. yeah, it's definitely a lot. Before I, uh, I'll be posting a demo in the next couple of weeks or so. But uh, I definitely want to tweak right. the uh, the gameplay because I don't want people downloading it and trying it for once and say this is too hard and then they forget about it. You know, I want people to have fun with it. So, um, yes, you know, yeah. because people and will. It, and it's always great to have the the different skill levels as well for the people who are just starting out or the people that really want the arcade style experience of difficulty. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. So yeah, so what do you guys think? Do you think it's a uh, uh, awesome? Okay, good. Really I, good. Yeah. But, I mean, I love shooters, yeah. and this provides everything you need in a shooter. It's not, and it plus more because in a lot of shooters, it's just like, yep, kill all the spaceships at the top. Yeah. Right? 
and avoid their bullets. This has you maintaining a lot of things at once. You have to watch the spiders going through. You have to shoot the super webs because because the spiders are going through, the webs are advancing down. You have the to screen, avoid the super is, webs, but then yes. apparently you need to shoot them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like the, uh, in the beginning you're just dodging them, and yeah. And yeah. you're you you you're going on one side of the screen, trying to push back the web, and then all yeah, of a sudden you're <laughs> like, oh my god, the left hand side of the, the left hand side of the screen's bad now. Yeah. You have to go over there. You're doing a lot, which is great in a game. It keeps you active and interested. Yes. Yeah. I I, I enjoy. It. I I really enjoy playing. So I I like this version better than the arcade. The arcade I think is a little too overwhelming. Yeah. You don't have the options to do. You know, play a little bit less. Uh, oh. And Thomas mentions it feels a lot like Centipede, and Centipede does have a lot of similar style of enemies and the mushrooms coming down. They're not coming to kill you, but yes. the centipedes move down the screen. Yeah. There's uh, some similar. Yeah, it's funny you say that because one of the Bugs. Uh, one of the extra <laughs> enemies we're thinking of adding would be like a spider that would be similar to the one in centipede that comes in from the left and right and oh. bounces like that. Oh. So I think that'd be a cool that's, um, hom that's evil. homage yeah. to the to, uh, <laughs> um, um, centipede, but also you know kind of keep you uh, engaged on there as well. So yeah. Old school uh, seventy says, "Take my money, John." So you've got us. You've got one sale. All right. That's right. They like it as it is. Yeah. So yeah, just just put it out. Slap a label on it. You're good. Yeah. Go. Speaking of label, yeah. Like I said, Dave drives. He's uh, making great progress on the uh, artwork, and I think people are gonna be really impressed with that as well. So even if you don't like the game, oh, it still look, look great on your on the shelf. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely what you want. You want it to stand out. Yep. And uh, yeah. Um. So timeline on this? Yeah, this this will know, be the first one we finished in 2025, which I hard to believe we're actually saying 2025 already, but it's coming up. We're in the future. Yeah. Where's our spaceship? Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> so yeah, so we're gonna try to get this one at least close to release, so we can put it on the shelf and then um, focus on Xevious and then that dual stick shooter that I've been talking about. Um, yeah, I could. I can't figure yeah, it out. Yeah, then there may be what, some which one it is. Uh, more champions <laughs> presents options if you know if there are people out there that are trying to, you know, release a game that uh, um, they don't they don't right. have an avenue to do that. You know, certainly, we're not here to take any um, anything away from Atari Age, obviously. So, but you know, if there's games yeah. that if, if, we're, if they're the only if we're the only uh, game in town or option in town, you know, <laughs> um, give us give yeah. us a call. You know, certainly we'd like to work with you. I know. Uh, um, we do have a, like a template set up now where it's, you know, and again, not, you know, apologies to everyone, you know, the first Champ Games Presents guys, you know, we are a little playing off, off the cuff and, uh, you know, working off the seat of our pants trying to figure out how to get that, get that done. So it was a long, but long process. But all the releases look good. Yeah. Like the boxes look good, the cartridges. I mean, it's all up to the standard of what people have already ex got from Champ Games releases. Yep. We're, yeah. We're so, you know, of that to, to Nathan, obviously, and all his hard work, and yeah. certainly Al, who helped us with the transition to make sure our, our games were at least to the quality of what Atari each produces. So, you know, thanks to him for all that yeah. initial legwork that helped as well. So, um, Kabuto Coder says demo on Champ Games website. Not not right now. No. Uh, yeah. that you said a, a couple weeks. Yeah, I'd say yeah. I, I need to, I need a break to be honest with you. I could, just been, uh, just <laughs> yeah. burned out from from everything. So, uh, um, but I, I, I had lot. fun doing this, and this is what I like to do. I like to make these games. So, uh, just getting the store set up and getting those titles in there. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's. Uh, that's why we did that. Uh, you know, that's that takes a lot of a lot of effort as well. And Nathan does a lot of stuff on the side too. I'm sure he's a little burnt out too. You know, doing images for the store and you know all the stuff he has to do to to get to get that as well. So. Um, we're hoping to get back to game development, you know, soon. So that's excellent. Yeah. Yep. Um, so let's uh, go into the next game. Oh, um, I won't make you sit through our gameplay, but we will play it. Good old Tutankham. Um, Good. Yeah, Tutankham, which has just been uh, released yes. in box. It's available on 
the Champ Games website. Yes, I've not made an official announcement. Well. Again, I just kind of put it in okay. there. I like to do that just yeah. so in case it's, it's a any problems. <laughs> uh, but but yeah. unfortunately, word got out somehow because the orders are coming fast and furious. So we're, we're already on back order. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, we're already on back order. We success. Unfortunate that, but, success. Uh, you know, for the, anyone back order it. Um, <laughs> Fred did get back to me. He said he's putting together a huge batch of boards. And so we'll be processing orders. Oh, and, and we're doing it first, you know, in order that we get them. So um, yep. there's an advantage to back order. We're not, I'm not pushing anyone to back order. But um, if you want to get ahead of, you know, in the queue, that's how you do it. Or, <laughs> But we'll, we'll have plenty yeah. of copies. So there's no – once we get to this mad fury, if you want to, you know, if you're interested in the game and want to order it in a couple months – it's going nowhere. We have no plan. We, we don't like to think of things as in limited quantity. So, you yeah. Know. There's plenty for everyone yeah. as it comes. Yeah, we have yeah. plenty of all of our games. We ordered everything. Um, so we're, we're in good shape there. We did order limited quantities of the Champions published games, but I mentioned that up front, that those are actually selling yeah. much more than I anticipated. So <laughs> I don't know. Well, that's great. Yeah. Great for all the, the gives guys. you an idea for the future. I yeah, guess. great for all the uh, the developers that put their hard work in there. That the games are being, you know, appreciated and uh, supported as well. Yeah. So, oh, and before we get on to this, I was uh, meaning to mention you have an upcoming game being released, re-released through Atari. Yes, yes, yep. So, um, Caverns of Mars. Yep. Right. Yeah. So, just for the people out out there, so that everyone understands the story. Um, I originally d developed. Conquest of Mars, that's Caverns of Mars back in 2005 for the late great uh, Kurt Vendell, who was working for Legacy Engineering um, and in association with Atari for their flashback consoles. He did the, what I think is considered the greatest flashback, the Flashback 2, which is actual real hardware. Yes. Um, Very soft. Yes, after. exactly. So I have one of those. Uh, but anyway, so I was developing a update to the Caverns of Mars that was released for that and it was going to be released on a subsequent release of the flashback too but then at games stepped in and the whole thing went down the nes on the chip route i'm not putting it down i'm just saying that's where it went um and i think yeah. they even didn't have the rights for caverns of mars at the time for some reason so it shouldn't mm. have even been included on the flashback too but that's that's for the lawyers <laughs> to sort out like that ever stopped me right? that's right but anyway <laughs> <laughs> no nope. exactly anyway so um long story short is that um you know Kurt suggested at the time, hey, why don't you just release it through Atari Age, you know, with Al, yeah. change the name, yeah. and that's what we did. So um, that was the first game I right. ever finished. Um, but here we are nice. 20 years yeah. later, and Atari just uh, approached me and said, hey, can we, uh, you know, as they actually own the IP. So it just seemed like a good idea to say, hey, right. this is your IP. Yeah. Let's sell it as what it was originally intended. So um, I spent yeah, a couple weeks great. updating the thing, you know, um, changing the graphics and uh um really uh, modifying the, the title yeah the skill yeah. levels were very uh little off i did all the testing myself which wasn't a good idea at the time uh, okay. um so these are much <laughs> more accessible to novice and beginning players so um oh cool so it's an updated version yes yeah then. so yeah actual gameplay yep. updated oh, that's yes awesome. yeah there's like i said there's probably two weeks worth of work in there so it wasn't just hey let's slap on a you know caverns of mars logo and call it done there's a uh, there's a lot of uh, um, minor changes. It's still the same game, obviously, but it's. Uh, um, yeah. I think people. Will, I, I think people will enjoy it. So yeah, we have a working relationship with Atari, and uh, you know, there's discussions for, you know, who knows, maybe some other projects in the future. So. Yeah, that'll be awesome. So those are uh, that's coming out late November, if I remember correctly, along with a whole bunch of uh, Bob Decker's Enzo. Yes. Yeah, well. it's great. Yeah, Bob. Bob hit, hit the jackpot there just because a lot of his games cool. happen to yeah. be Atari properties. Um, yeah, whole for bunch. For me, the only one that wasn't anything against the Atari properties. You know, at the time, I just was doing different games. Um, and Caverns of Mars yeah. happened to be the only one. So, uh, yeah, so that, that's great for Bob. Certainly well-deserved that, you know, it oh, seems yeah. uh, fitting that the, the person that basically single-handedly kept the 700 alive for all those years is now part of its, what I consider a relaunch, <laughs> you know. Um, it's... It really yeah. is. Yeah, the 7800 Plus, which will be made accessible yeah. so people can plug it into their modern TVs and a whole bunch of 7800 games as well. So, yeah, yeah it's pretty much is a relaunch and there's a whole huge, awesome catalog of 7800 games. Yeah, yeah. And it's just quick, 
point on that 7800 plus we, you know we are still working with atari and, and fred oh, uh, hopefully yes. uh have our games working on there i think scramble now will work on oh, on that awesome. and some of the re-releases we did um like juno first star um castle the end shroud of Ox wow. should all work on the 7800 and the 2600 plus with the updated firmware um Sweet. but there is there are we're still in discussions trying to figure out a way to get that uh those games to work i know that's i think it's 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 in the works and it's very important to atari it just you know sometimes there are technical barriers you can't get over but you know if there's any way to do it yeah. we, we will do it so um that's awesome that's great to hear because yep. i think that's that is really important to bring it up to at least like 99.9 percent .9 of all games work yes and yep the catalog of your games would be a shame not to be able to play on those reissued consoles because i'm sure a lot of people will buy them and would be disappointed uh to not be able to play the some of the best games ever made for the 2600 oh, well thanks yeah yeah but yeah it's definitely a, it's, it's a win-win for everyone so you know uh that's both with Ben yeah. and Matt. Um, you know, ben from Play On. We, we all know guys. Ben. He stopped yeah. by. Actually, he played a Tootin' yeah. Com um, arcade at yeah. the Champ Games booth. He loved it even and bought the last copy. So that person that wanted a copy, <laughs> blame Ben. Um, yep. <laughs> but yeah, no. Email him at. Uh, yeah, so no. <laughs> he's very excited. And, and you know, he's used, yeah. he's used that as inspiration to, you know, hopefully uh, get this, uh, you know, one day be able to play Tootin' Com arcade on one of the, uh, you know, Atari hardware pieces whether yeah. it's 700 plus whatever it is so yeah so that's excellent. so that's that's the story behind that's, it so that's great that it's still in the works and still pushing towards yeah that. if it was easy it would have been done by now it's just something we have we have the best and the brightest doing their best to try to figure this out um and yeah. it may be something where only new games are supported there may be no way to get the older games to work or at least you know yeah. the old cartridges but it may be something where yeah. a new you know, a release gets updated somehow and, uh, you know, it's cartridge right. to be reflashed, but, you know, I don't want to say too much because it's, you know, I, I signed something it's saying I wouldn't, but, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, that's you know. exactly what you signed in the yeah. NDA. <laughs> as long as, long as people, know that people are, yeah. you know, this is important to not only champ games, which is also important to Atari. And, uh, you know, there's no one sitting back yes. saying, well, too bad. It's, it's not like that at all. It's, Hey, let's try yeah. to get this to work. Which they're putting real time, real resources, and yeah, you know, a lot of yeah. people are spending. And every time I talk to the people at Atari, I I I stress how important. I mean, I talk to them uh, during the uh, live broadcast from PRG, and I talk to them, you know, off off camera as well. And I always, you know, stress the fact that the how big the community is, and the community wants these games to be supported on their systems. Yep, and, and yes, and, uh, and they, yeah. they have heard that message loud and clear and yeah like i said it's, it's not just great. you know fan service or anything of like that they're they're putting actual time and effort into this so yeah because we all want atari to succeed because we want these awesome new systems to support all these great great games that we play right now yeah it's a, like you said it's a win-win for everyone if if it all comes to fruition exactly yep it's just going to put a spotlight it's, you know, it's another way for our home brewers for our games to be enjoyed because a lot of people that want to play our games but they don't want to go to a flea market and get a 2600 modded or go in their attic or whatever you know they want to be able if you had like you know yeah. your game and a 2600 plus or whatever for sale right there and say hey you can go plug this into your home right now and play it you know people would be more apt to yeah. that than well you know you got to go on ebay and this thing might not work yeah. you have to recap it you know people <laughs> people don't we doesn't we don't mind because we're a bunch of geeks but you know like normal people you, you know they don't, they don't want to have to deal with all that so yeah and you don't want to have to explain all the time well it works on this system but not this system and here's the list of compatibilities yeah Oops. yeah get that get, kick him out he's bad he's a bad cat <laughs> the cat is chewing cables <laughs> anyway so he gets that way when he has doesn't get treats but let's get to the unboxing of tutankham arcade and you can explain what uh what went into uh the box and the release of this okay so let me switch over to the cat cam and uh unbox it and you can talk us through it 
Okay, great. I won't be able to hear you, unfortunately, but Darcy will. You can That's fine. Him. Okay, Darcy. Stop or okay. <laughs> uh, James is off. <laughs> An annoying guy. <laughs> he didn't say anything about the Tutankham uh, t-shirt either. <laughs> okay, so oh, yeah, I, he's the okay. worst. There's the box. Good. Yeah, the artwork by David Drys. Do it later. Yeah, he did it amazing. <laughs> um, with that artwork, I think it's great. And Nathan actually did the. Uh, so the artwork is handed off to Nathan, and Nathan did all the layout um, for the box and the uh, label. Um, so you see right there. So yeah, it looks really great. Yep. So you know, it's standard uh, release, uh, including. Uh, a, color manual actually our manuals are now glossy now i don't know if people notice that but uh um, we added that and uh comes with a poster and obviously the cartridge um and i think if you bought it at prge have, uh, there's more content should be some kind of coupon in there for the for, for the free rom contents contents inside yes yeah all the contents at least yeah. talking about the contents <laughs> and and you're still in the box because you can't hear and i'm i'm communicating poorly i'm I'm not much of a go-between, yeah, okay. apparently. <laughs> so you see, it comes with a box. Yeah, and there's a very nice label. Excellent. Good. Champ Games. Next. Okay. <laughs> oh, so little respect for your... <laughs> okay, here's the glossy uh, rule book. Yep, see, yeah, so, yeah, we... Uh... We actually meant to do the uh, last batch last year to be glossy as well, but uh, we ran out of time because it was it's a lead time for that. But uh, we were, really we were able to on our reprint. We were able to do it as originally intended. So yeah, I think the manual came out great. Um, great layout by uh, Nathan. We're trying to streamline our, all of our games to follow a similar layout. So it's uh, oh it's, yeah, that's a good yeah. Idea. So it's not a huge stress. So people will know what to expect and. Uh, it's easier, yep. easier on us too, where everything's not, you know, yeah. starting from scratch. So. It becomes a language to like the reader as well. And yes, exactly. They just Start know the well. shortcuts. And, yeah, 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 that's great. Yep. What's that? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, someone <laughs> someone asked in the chat when they can use that uh, code. And apologies. That was the intention was to add everything to the store right after PRGE, but we just added a couple days, so. For those who did buy a PRG, our big show special was free ROM with the with the purchase of the cart. Um, for you non-show people, we do offer a you know a five dollar discount on the ROM if you buy it at the same time as the cartridge. So that's all in the store. But anyway, there's a nice poster. Good stuff. There goes the cartridge. Yep. Hopefully it works. Fingers crossed. It goes in. <laughs> It'll work. <laughs> oh wait, no. If it if it doesn't if it doesn't, if it doesn't oh, work wait. though, you can blame the just tech mageddon that we're having. Yes, today. Yeah. today yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna put in the dual stick. Woo! Yep. So just so people know, it supports dual stick, but it also supports single stick, and also um, two button. Um, joysticks as well to fire left and actually um, it supports joystick 2b plus um, configurations which is three buttons which i didn't know existed but someone told me so i did code that in so if you have a three button joystick you can use button three for flash um, really you can use three buttons wow that's very cool yeah i didn't know so and then i feel like People, James never mentioned it. Yeah, so people that are interested in oh, the full version well, uh, versus the demo. Yeah. Which, uh, you know, we kind of went, we added a lot of new stuff to this. So the arcade version is represented to so all four levels, all the enemies and stuff like that. Standard three, uh, um, you know, so you, novice. Did you go through all the different control schemes? Yeah, I just I just uh, briefly mentioned that it supports dual stick, um, single stick, yeah. um, or joystick with one button, joystick with two buttons, and also joystick with three buttons. Um, if someone happens to have one of those, it's called 2B plus. They call that Joy 2B plus compatible. Right. Uh, so the third button you can use as a flash. If you have two buttons, then you can fire left and right with the two buttons, and then both buttons will do the flash. And single button is 
you know, you have to fire basically left and right while pressing the button, and then you have to double tap the button to flash. So it gets a little more complicated the less buttons you have. Uh, the best way to yeah. play is with um, dual stick. Dual stick. Where one moves, the other one fires left and right, and then the button on the second joystick is actually your flash because you don't want to have to right. you can still move. So you can actually still double click the button on the joystick, um, the left stick, if you want to use the flash as well. So. Does Darcy know how to play this? Well, that's how you do flash. Uh, I played before. Yeah. Well, so right, right joystick to fire, left and right, left to, to move. Yep. Shoot all the things, get the keys, open the doors, get the treasure. Yep. So the option at the beginning Go were, you know, you can uh, play with the arcade mazes, which there are four. Go through that. And yeah. then there's, um, so that's new. I don't, people saw that with the... Uh, you can't shoot up. Yeah. I didn't think so, but that, you know, that's what makes it too calm. But I try. Love it or hate it. That's what <laughs> makes it too calm. Yeah, it it adds that just a little bit le more level of difficulty where you can't shoot up. So you have to be a little strategic of where you hide and where you kind of stick around. Yep. Yeah. And and if you're it's, it's actually kind of yeah. cool. And if you're really good, you can still shoot something above and below you. Um, because oh. of may if you what? notice, the laser starts a little to your right or left depending on what. So well, oh, as it's coming down, okay. if you time it perfect, you can actually shoot something above and below you. Oh, nice. Well, it's, yeah. it's for the faint of heart and the experts only, so. <laughs> um, so we did we did uh, go through this in quite detail when we uh, premiered, yes. the, premiered the game. So this is more about the release, uh, the retail release of the game. Um, obviously, you went through the box and yep. you gave huge props to Nathan Strum and <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> right. yeah all, all the guys all the testers too so I did a sound on this one yeah. so this is the first game we did sound on so uh, that was actually fun I actually enjoyed it so that was, that was good oh nice yeah um, some music and everything so um, this necessity is the mother of invention right is that what they say or something like that? Um, that's right but so what kind of uh, reception have you got uh from this game it's actually been um, from yeah people? it's been a lot more positive not that i didn't think it would be positive but a lot of people like we sold out at prge which i've never done i actually had to make more copies wow so even though we did sell out of tootencom and elevator agent we actually had uh two games last year um ah. so i was i was impressed by that and the uh, the uh, feedback has been um, I, th I think people enjoy it because it's a different type of game from us. Um, you know, it's like yeah. it has a, some adventure flair to it that we haven't had before. Um, yeah, that's true. And certainly, uh, people appreciate the um, the control scheme, um, the dual stick. Um, the, you know, the graphics and sound <laughs> really uh, have been um, appreciated. Um, and also the feet. huge upgrade from the original 2600, yeah, th which th was like yeah. basically a reimagining of the game. It wasn't terrible. Yeah, it was just different. Uh, I know a lot of people very, have fond memories different. of that, and I, actually, I enjoyed it as oh. well uh, as a kid. I thought, you know, considering um, yeah. what happened is once you get spoiled, you know, if you play like what happened <laughs> to me is I loved all my 2600 games uh, until I then I got my Atari 8-bit game. Um, you know, hunt yeah. computer. Then I started playing the games on there first, and then then you go back to the twenty six hundred. Then it's like, okay, well, this, this is not too good. <laughs> so yeah, that's true. Does uh, Darcy know how to do a flash? Could have used one right there. So. Uh, which is it on the second joystick? Yeah, the one that he's firing with. Just press the button. There you go. Now he did yeah. it. Get that key. You gotta get that key. He only gets a get few back there. So I've got a key. Oh, you got a key. Okay, sorry. Yeah. You'll have to go back again. Afterwards. Yeah. The second key. Um, Our main problem is I can't steer to save uh, myself. <laughs> now you have to go back. Yeah, so I want to get this first. True. Yeah, um, like this is not an obscure game, but uh, it's not. It, how well known do you think this this game is from from the arcades? Um, I thought it was pretty well known. I think a lot of people were asking for. Um, you know, there hasn't yeah. been like what? Okay. It, we didn't get the uh, what's this kind of ah. response from people or, okay. or Nathan or anything like that. So that was that was one positive thing. Um, That's you know, good. the biggest complaint in the arcade is that, hey, you can only shoot left and right, and hey, you can <laughs> always, you're always moving. You know, it makes it difficult. Um, okay, just so people know, yeah. in the full version, you can flip the difficulty switch to A, and that'll stop you from moving automatically. So I don't know if that would help. Oh, that might okay. help Darcy, because he's doing terrible. <laughs> 
Hey, I don't know about that. I don't know. He's he's doing okay. I think he's doing better than last yes, time. Yes, exactly. Yeah, he's got to get used to the arcade version of it. Yeah, that's, that's we just, how we I just, feel we like, just like you know, we just like to pick on Darcy. He's, he's, doing, he's doing fine. That's true. So, but yes. yeah, so people he's, have he's, that option. That was a, one of the complaints from Nathan, and I see his point. It's one of those things. I have fond memories. I visited my uncle first time I went. <laughs> you can't shoot first time I went to Florida back in 1982. Oh. Um, he flew with me and my brother down to his house, his condo in in um, nice. Florida for sixty nine dollars round trip on People's Express. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> anyway, so it's the first time I had flown, and I flew by myself. Well, Paul and I flew together, and he had an arcade next to him, and they had this game in it. It's the first time I played it. I, I loved it, you know, again, probably because of the adventure, action adventure um, pieces to it. So at that point, you just figure, yes. okay, you can only fire left and right. And you're always moving. And then you get past it and then you just use yep. it as, okay, work with there, there's your challenge. So, um, yeah. But anyway, so with this game. So it's, it's, I mean, people have been used to it from Pac-Man for many years by the time this came out, the constant movement. Yes, exactly. So, so that's but, not super unusual of, of a, a game element. Right. So. Um, it's good to add those options. That's and, one thing that Champ Games likes to do is that, okay, we'll give you the arcade experience, but hey, flip this difficulty yeah. switch and all of a sudden you're not moving. It's a different experience. Or we add in new uh, levels. So the maps you can do, and how you can do, uh, if you want to show them, um, I don't think I've seen it yet, but if we have the new uh, maps, which oh. actually based off, but someone actually did a uh, version of Tutankham for Windows and a few other systems called Tutankham Returns. And we got permission from that author to use um, a few of his mazes. In the well, let's uh, let's uh, let's show those mazes. I'm going to reset the game so we can show them. Yeah. So so that was great. Um, oh, I would have won. I would have gotten all the way to the end, but you. Oh yeah, he would have made it to the end. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. So sure. uh, start by press, press the button. Press the button, and then the maps. Yeah. Right? So you have two maps. options here. You Random. can play arcade or champ maps, and then each one you can flip them horizontally or vertically which is awesome yeah so it's basically yeah, they yeah, yeah. the different colors and they play like different levels completely so it's like it's like getting 16 levels in one oh. um it automatically started so uh, we don't want this one we've seen this one so it's the champ ones we want to see yes yeah so you'll see there we go not only did we throw new levels in there nathan ah, they did a great enemies. job um, he added all new um um Treasures and uh, enemies as well. So Ooh. now you have the jackal. Oh, look at you those! You have the mummy. You have look at those mummies. The animation on them so yeah. good, Nathan. And I should notice uh, the na the uh, the mummy is special in that it can actually go through the um, portals. Oh, that's the only wow. creature that can. So just be aware. So sure. if he's above you, I, I can you can you not shoot enough. with a with a key? Holding a key? Is no, it? no. It was I just didn't press the joystick. Oh, okay. Never mind. Shoot, shoot now. Okay. Yeah. Because when Darcy was in that big open area in uh, the last game he played, he said he was not able to shoot in that big open arena. Well, there is a timer. So. It, uh, oh. did you see that timer up up there at time 39, 38, yep. or. You guys are probably a little ahead of yep. me. If that gets to <laughs> yep. zero, then you're out of luck. That's from the arcade. Oh. So that's that's the that's oh, your um, okay. rifle timer, we call it. Um, so you should have heard. It should have started beeping and flashing. Um, okay. Well, we're talking. Yeah. Okay. So so that was. Uh, so see right now. Oh, nice end graphics. Oh, the cat at the yeah, end is awesome. Yep. Yeah, so yeah, Nathan put new all new um, end graphics as well. Um, treasures to, to collect so um the challenge mode itself has some features that are new to the arcades that are different um including um oh there's like walls are closed behind you there's uh oh wow um, nice i did that john okay good the audio somebody said the audio was out of sync so I, no, they are okay. great yeah. the game crashed <laughs> oh no exactly yeah, they get, they, it's all gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, yeah. I've always waited with bated <laughs> breath. Luckily, we had this one done <laughs> six weeks beforehand, so um, there actually was a, oh, yeah. a part where it was crashing that Jurgen found during his testing, and it took oh, it took no. forever to fix it. But we finally found it, and he tried it and said, "Okay, I can't get it to crash anymore." So that's the thing. I wanted to actually ask you about testing and. Uh... 
how that how many people you have on your testing team normally and the process yeah uh like when do you begin testing like yeah. maybe just do a quick rundown of your testing. yeah we try to get to it early um again i don't want to have guys testing stuff that's um too early to test because everything's going to change but once i've settled right. in on something that i think is playable and the difficulty is about what i want it to be and most of the features are done um, sometimes I'll give them a version. So I, what I do is I start a private club on the Atari H forum, which is a great way to do it because that's a central place where we it can is. all chat. We can share ROMs. You can share versions of ROMs, version notes. So people are always yep. using the same. Um, you know, we're always going by the, the latest, all latest and greatest. Yeah. It's not like some thread where things are all hidden and you know pages get lost. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, yeah that's and so it's much easier. Yeah. So we have like four or five people that are actively so steve ramirez uh, jurgen oster who i've mentioned a few times Ooh. nathan withy yep. uh who's um the callister um yeah and uh, machine tom um he's on there obviously Jay. oh nice yeah um, nathan does tests i'm sure i'm forgetting a few people but uh um, rats. um there's a glenn rats in this one. um so cool yeah darn what is i forgot what, I forgot what his real name is no, that is his real name. I forgot to say that. That is yeah, his real name. <laughs> his other name. He does a lot of great reviews for me. I can't. I, I'll just call him. I can't remember his online name yeah, either. Well, Glenn Mayne. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll call him Glenn. Yeah. But yeah, no, he yeah. Just, um, Darn. Sorry, Glenn. Um, <laughs> I, I only remember your, your real name. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's a travesty. Um, that's terrible. <laughs> but yeah, no, he's, he's been a great tester. He didn't test this one. He bowed out on this one. So that's, that's also a good thing. Okay. We have a pool of people that test. And then at the beginning, I say, hey, if you're interested, let me know. And then uh, some people say, yeah. oh, I'll just save it. Because then, I'll, you know, they're privy to some of the special projects that we're going to be starting. So I say, hey, here's what we have coming down the pike. And I'll say, oh, well, we'll wait for this one to come out. You know, people don't want to spend all yeah. their... A lot of people uh, want to... This is something I'd like to experience one day, is that uh, be able to uh, test the game, you know, or, you know, play the game for the first time, like... When, 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 it's when done. you buy it exactly and get that, that get yeah. that thrill um, instead of having to uh, that's true you know because testing you know it's it's not all fun and glory you get access to the it's early builds right but mm. you basically are have to be methodical about it where in my opinion sometimes it takes the fun out of it because you have to what's the plus beside darcy's name there did he continue no that just he... means he uses um use champ um, oh, yeah, so we do that. Right. So, Champ you know, version. if we have some kind of high score uh, contest and people are only using arcade mazes. Um, or only champ mazes. Yes, exactly. But yeah. if, you, if, yeah, you, do yeah. a, if cool. you do a mix, because you can do random mazes, which will mix. If you do all, then that'll do all of them, like in order. Uh, and then okay. random will do will alternate between a champ and a uh, um, uh, regular level. And then you can also flip oh, okay. randomly, too. Oh, so, um, so this is a flip maze. So, but it looks like a completely okay. different maze because it's different colors, um, tops, and the orientation that's... makes it different to play. So, yeah, that's great um, to give some variety to people that uh, have played the original mazes. Completely. Yep. I don't know if you guys even noticed the map up there, but uh, you know the map was kind yeah. of superfluous in the uh, arcade as well. But uh, it is helpful, um, yeah. especially because um, in the arcade it only showed where the end bonus is. And also oh. where the, uh, uh, what do you call it, where the uh, enemies were and where you were. But Like on Wizard of War, it's essential yes, they, to have the map. they go invisible on you. Invisible. Yeah. Yeah. We toyed with invisible but, enemies here. We said, no, it's going to be too much like Wizard of War. And some people just don't yeah. like invisible mazes. It just it's, well, sometimes feels like a cop-out. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's just yeah. unnecessarily difficult, I find. It's yeah. Like, oh, I have a maze and uh, it's invisible? Yes, or or and the enemies are invisible and my... And, and, and the I'm enemy, invisible. everything. It's like, just show and a black I'm screen invisible. to say, by the way, the graphic. Yeah. Like, we can't see it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no job for Nathan to do it yeah, all. Yeah, I was toying around. We had in... Um, and actually, this is interesting because there's a, a, a lantern or a torch... Oh, icon in the arcade that was not used so we were trying to oh, okay. have it so only part of the maze was shown kind of like adventure and you'd have to collect the, oh. uh, the um the uh torch to illuminate the rest of it um we ran out of time space and sanity to do all that and plus <laughs> it was it proved to be too not too difficult but it was just yeah, uh, it would, uh it would 
taken too much of a rewrite. You can only get um, treasures from uh, top and bottom, by the way. Oh, so, okay. So one of the, oh. So, yeah, so one of the, I no, see. And you can only get Go keys from left and right. But, yeah, so that, unfortunately, um, with the uh, play field graphics, we don't have the um, luxury of having a little small wall there. I did. Yeah, um, that's what I, I did was think about yeah. putting the ball in there to block that, but uh, um, which oh, okay. I could have done, but it was too much space. And again, just for that feature to be put in, I would have had to take out a lot of the essential stuff of the game. So, I, I, right, you know, yeah. Again, it's only so many sacrifices yeah. you want to make. And I wanted to keep it at 32k piece because once you hit 64k, now it doesn't run on your Harmony car, and you yeah. know, then I need the bigger yeah, chip people... from Fred. You know, it takes twice as long to burn it. You know, it's just <laughs> no. It, yes. it sounds all silly, but when you're trying to publish these games. Yeah. Okay, I gotta you know nine you know to think about all yeah, these eighty percent of my games use storage K chips, so those are all easy. And then th these are special ones that has to be put in backwards. This one has to be flipped a certain way. You right. know, only, only this programmer works with it. Doesn't run on the harmony. <laughs> blah blah blah. You need still X Y Z for it. It's like you know the compatibility matrix becomes a nightmare. So we're trying to keep everything thirty two K. Yeah, so. that's, that's unless it absolutely uh, needs it. So Zevius will be sixty four K, just because. Yeah. Without it, we, we can't put in high scores, and we can't put in the final boss, and you know, so we will have to give up some main parts of the game to even get that into third UK. So, so at that point, yeah. it makes sense, and that's why we went with elevated agent. I couldn't put every as much as I tried. I could not put everything into third UK. So, but the benefit there was once we had six four K, then I was able to put in all that challenge mode with the spies and stuff like that. So it's like, hey, now I have all this extra space. Let's put in some cool stuff. So, <laughs> oh, that's great. Both both of these games are so good. Oh, they're, thanks. They're so much fun. Um, really happy that you decided to pluck an obscure arcade game that almost nobody had heard of uh, out of and and put it on the twenty six hundred because. It's it's a great shooter, and oh, great. Um, hopefully people, even if they have not heard of it, hopefully now they like will. this video and and other people showing it off and and downloading the demo too, which is great mm -hmm. that you provide demos um, of of games as well for people to play. Yep, because you it, have a flash. It, I remember. Oh yeah, because it because oh, it helps 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 for people who are unfamiliar. Uh, with the game. Pack. Absolutely. And especially in this day of compatibility issues too, with, uh, you know, so many things, you know, it helps us to say, you know, our disclaimer for anyone who's buying the cartridge, download the ROM first, make sure that works. You know, yes. that doesn't help us with cartridges, obviously, because for the 20 no. cent plus, that's a unique situation, but still, uh, you know, right now we're just saying we don't support any game 20 cent plus until, you know, I can physically prove it myself. And, uh, you know, there's some kind of... Uh, <laughs> Oh. I was going to ask also about compatibility and how uh, robust your testing is for compatibility. You you test on a whole bunch of 2600s, a 7800, yes. 5200 with 2600 adapter. I do have that. And Intellivision? Yes, we do test that. Intellivision? I don't have the Intellivision one, so I do have a guy okay. that does have that. I think Steve, actually. Uh, Steve Ramirez has that. Oh, he has that. Yeah, so he's, uh, he's filled <laughs> me in on that, so we try to be as robust. Again, you know, it's... It's basically okay. a two-man show here with testers, you know, with Nathan and I. Yeah. So it's a, uh, you know, it's. Well, I'm already spending uh, testing is extremely important, but we we I'm really rely on our something. testers to try to to give us that information. Like Jurgen will do all the PAL testing for us. And, um, so we we do yeah. have people testing on oh, PAL, PAL too, systems. Yeah. So you know, it's like. No, just uh, PAL 7800s, PAL and televisions. No, no, exactly. So <laughs> Some... you know, Sears Tele games and Gemini systems. And, oh, jeez. You know, yeah. Um, There's a lot. Yeah. Oh wow, fireballs. Nice. Yeah. Ah, fireballs yeah. are tough. Well, you're playing what? Yeah, you're playing yeah. novice, so they're not too tough. But um, no. no yeah, it's not too the tough. rat actually will duck under your shot sometimes. Cause I've had people <gasps> oh, say, hey, God. you know, sometimes they shoot the rat. Because the way he gets low, his shot will actually go through him. But uh, oh, okay, yeah. clever. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. why. So does that happen with the snake as well? No, the snake, or the snake, the snake is, is pretty big. Suitable. So um, that one, that okay. one's not an issue. But yeah, we just tried to make not just new graphics, but also have a new challenges. That's why we have the mummy going through the uh, um, 
um, the back door, the, like the fireball will never yeah. turn around because that doesn't make sense. Fireballs don't turn around. They just. <laughs> That's you know. right. They hit the wall and bounce yeah, off. Yeah, so, right? so they'll, they'll obviously change <laughs> That's direction. That's cool. Yeah. But the other enemies will sometimes change direction mid, uh, mid uh, uh, hallway that like they do in the arcade. So. Well, now that I know the fireballs don't change directions, it's, it's really cool to see them bounce around. And, and you know where they're going to go pretty much yeah. for a little ways. I mean, yeah, exactly. So, get to a junction. Yeah, so you can use that to your advantage. Um, yeah. Um, uh, Thomas asks if you test your games in all the TIA variants, too. <laughs> um, we do. I do test them under Stella. But, you know, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's pretty so good. So that will at least... But there's some issues that can't be resolved. You know, it's like if, I'm when, if yeah. someone... Actually, uh... like my system is is crazy. I've got the RGB RGB board, which has color time issues. Yes, timing issues, and you, sometimes you just can't compensate for that. Yep, it's just the ti timing's too tight. Yeah, there was so there's an issue on kicks. I know of like the title screen, the kicks graphics on the top get corrupted. And a guy bought a cartridge for me and said, "What's going on?" Blah blah. And I said, "Well, yeah. this is uh." It looks like you have a TIA variant issue. If you replace a TIA, you should be fine. Um, and he didn't believe me. <laughs> yeah. And then I said, well, go into uh -huh. Stella. And I just talked him yeah. through and I said, click on this. And it was like an early PF write or something like that. And then click on that box. Right. And he goes, that's exactly what I see. I went, well, there it is. And he, he was yeah. uh, proficient enough. Not that he didn't believe me. He said, you know, it was just kind of like, well, it sounds like just an excuse. Like, oh, yeah, it's going to be your machine. But he changed. <laughs> Lazy but he, programming. Yeah, but he, he had the ability to swap out his TIA, and he did it, and it worked. So it was, uh, you know, yeah. well, obviously. Oh, really? Swapped out the TIA? Nice. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, well, a, he's right? a hardware guy. So, but obviously, okay. you know, I'm not saying that to say, well, that's what I tell all my customers. TF, <laughs> just swap your TFB, TIA, you know, right? you know, get a soldering iron and, you know, go to school, you know, <laughs> but, you know, get on it. Obviously, if there's the, any, the any way we can avoid those bullet, issues by, way, yeah. you know, having, uh, you know, our kernels not be so precise that we do it. But unfortunately, one of the uh, things looks very happy. You know, hallmarks of, happy of champ games is to, uh, you know, we push the limit where we're always looking for that one cycle. So if things work, it's because it's the only way to do it. At least the only way we can do it. So it's not yeah. it's like we have the luxury of saying, "Oh, we can just do that an extra cycle earlier." It's because ninety percent of the time, yeah. if I can, then I was like, "Hey, maybe I can do something else in this line." <laughs> yeah, because I bet your kernels are are pretty. Tough. Yeah, they, they and, are for some. Like this one was. Yeah. Um, yeah, know, there's a lot going on. Yeah. So uh, things like kicks and all those. Those are like elevator agent was like, the most difficult one I've ever worked on, but. Uh, Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Um, so if uh, anybody doesn't, uh, if anybody has any questions for uh, John before we let him go about uh, these two new games that we showed on the stream, please post it now or forever hold your peace. Um, as always, it's it's awesome to talk to yeah, you. Yeah, it's great to talk John, to you guys, too. Uh, yeah, it's actually, your... sorry we've been here for a couple of nope. hours, but uh, it, was, it was fun. Yeah. As long as you have the time, we have the time. Yeah, I'll have to get back to work yeah. after this. But uh, no. <laughs> get back making those games. Yeah, no, no, no. I meant like real work. I've real work. Work. Real work. Yeah, paid I work. I just took a, took a little <laughs> break, but I'll. I started early. Oh, I'll, thank you. I'll uh, work late tonight, but uh, um, no, it was great. It was good to see uh, spiders being played by someone else besides uh, myself. And, uh, <laughs> it's awesome. Oh my god, it's a great. That's yeah, really good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's. Excellent. Good. Like I said, a lot going on. Yeah, so that'll be the first one released. I'll have a, a demo available. Anyone interested in Tootencom? I should also mention your T-shirt. Um, I it's one, oh, yes, one thing that's one right. thing I forgot to put in because usually our, the only T-shirt sales we get is when I first add the game to the store because people are like, oh, let me get the T-shirt too, but I forgot to do it. So I added that this morning. So we have a limited supply of Tootencom that comes in blue and um, and black. Black. So uh, yeah. Anyway, Tanya's got a black one. I've got a blue one. Yep. Or is it the opposite way around? These lights are burning. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, so, but yeah, the blue is a very dark blue. So, but it looks kind of cool. So, anyone interested? Yeah, stuff's in the store. But you know, just heed warning. I'm not trying to get anyone to do any back orders. But everything's on back order now, <laughs> except for our old games, just yeah. because we had a limited quantity um, left over. We actually didn't have anything left over from PRGE, but I had a few 32k boards I was able to use 
Splatoon Com. Oh, good. Um, and then a few games that we brought back. So, but those are all sold out. Um, but we are getting a whole new batch from Fred, according to Fred, by uh, early <laughs> next week. So. Um, oh, good. And again, we are. Uh, Mark Zilla asks when the Spider demo is coming soon. Uh, two-ish weeks. Yeah, I'd say I think two weeks. Said yeah, that yep. seems reasonable. So I'll hand it off to Nathan okay. and get. I'm going to give it to our testers. Um, we'll try to yeah. squash any bugs. I saw a screen roll, but it's not too many. Yeah. Except for the spiders themselves, not too many bugs in it. So it's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just saw one screen roll. Everything else played really well. Yeah. So. so um, oh, what was I going to say? Um, oh yeah, it, people should definitely follow you on all your social media because you'll definitely post when Spiders is available. You know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you've got all those. Yeah, we usually just use Facebook and then uh, we have our Champ.Games yeah. website where you can go and, uh, you know, we post on our blog there. So all new news gets posted there as well. And then uh, I think, yeah, Paul usually will cross post into twitter formerly known as x or whatever yeah. whatever that is it's the other way around and you should get a mailing list do you have a mailing list too yeah well um you can sign up on champ games you can sign up and then um we send out a newsletter i haven't been that good about it but i sent one out when we yeah. first did cartridges um and then i'll do it again now usually what i like to do with al did the same thing which is a good idea is first you post it on social media let people um you know, it's that way you can stagger your orders. So yeah. then in a couple couple oh, weeks, yeah. you know, once this has died down, we'll uh, post on, um, you know, I'll send out uh, um, a newsletter to people saying, here's what's available, the new stuff. So, so yeah, so if you signed mm -hmm. up for that or have done business with us um, and haven't opted out, yeah. you'll, you'll get the, the, those messages as well. So. <laughs> And uh, Thomas says, please post at Atari Age. You're really good about that. That's why I didn't even say Yeah, it. I'm usually pretty yeah. good about that. I haven't even started Spider's Thread on there. That's no. in, uh, again, a... Which is unfortunate. I'd like to link to the yeah, threads. Yeah, I'll I do that say about um, the... this weekend yeah. or when the demo is ready. Awesome. I'll probably do it. That way people, because I like to yeah. follow on that as well. So get people, um, and then people can uh, go from there as well. So it's, as you know, James, you know, once, once you have something to share, it's always like, just sharing it is, when? A, is an when? effort when? just because yeah, uh, yeah. So i gotta put it out is. six thousand <laughs> things but it's great though it's great and then all the questions come in as well and you yeah. have to answer the questions yep. yes it's a it's a whole thing you have to prepare for a yes post. exactly yeah. so but it's it's great it's great to see honestly i i don't know if anyone else thought this but you know it seemed like retro gaming was in a lull there for a little bit that it was you know hey this has been going on for 15 20 years it's got to be going down <laughs> but it seems to be going up oh up, my god up, no up. So uh, it is. I mean, as certain platforms kind of take off here and there uh, as nostalgia kicks in or technology kicks in. But 2600 has been steady or rising every year for the number of releases and quality of releases. Yeah, exactly. So you know, that's obviously uh, um, uh, because of the community effort, what you guys do and yeah. everyone, you know, Stella. I see Stella 70 came out. Yes. That's amazing. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Stella. TJ and yeah. the whole team there, Steve. And Thank you, Thomas. That's great. Um, you know, all yeah. the work. And then Atari. I know, I know everyone likes to kind of kick Atari when they're down, but uh, I feel like they're on the, yeah. they're the way up. And for better or for worse, you know, that yep. 2600 plus and 1700 plus, uh, it's introduced a lot of people back to Atari um, and, you know, kind yep. of shine a light, not uh, on just if, them, if the but all of us, you know, the community as well. So, you know, big, big. And it's very encouraging the things they do. They, you know, once in a while they make a misstep or they miss something that the community could help them out mm -hmm. with. But they're doing a lot of good things, in my opinion, with supporting the community, community made releases yep. like yours and Bob Decker's Enzo, making accessibility a priority for they could just forego and do all emulation, but they're making boxes that you can put actual carts in i think that's a good thing yep. and they're trying to get the compatibility up which is also good they could just abandon it like you know retron 77 they just put it out and the community had to do everything yes but they are actually actively engaging and get getting it up to speed, absolutely which is so good. yep yeah so it's, it's good good on all, all fronts i think so it's uh ex exciting times so yeah. and we're uh it we're, is. We're, we're glad to be part of the uh the madness so yeah, and everybody, it, it is 
one big happy family really yeah. we're all well more or less we have to co <laughs> we are all cooperating let's yes, say absolutely. to push everything forward yeah i think i and, think everyone wants the same thing yeah. which is uh, which is a good thing we, we all have different opinions we're, how to, we're how all to getting get there, there. Exactly, but... exactly we're all getting there in a different bus but we're all get it going towards the same goal yep, yep. so um Markzilla asks a quick note for rip off any timetable progress. Are you working on that? Is that something that is an active? Thing yes, that's it is happening? active. Nathan has done the yeah. graphics for it. Bob actually already did the sounds for it. He did it for the 7,800 oh, and great. he's going to let me borrow the sounds. So it's really on me. Um, this is, that's what game that I played, uh, back in the day, um, with my brother, um, great co-op game. And we have some big plans for that. So that is in the queue Excellent. It has been started. Um, Boy, it was started back in 2007, but the rewrite, I should say, the reboot, kind of like we did with, uh, oh, which one did we reboot? Like Wizard of War, for example. I had started in 2007, we rebooted that. So yeah, Rip Off, is, right. that is going to be one of those. at least um, work in progress by uh, 2025, because uh, um, that's that's something, uh, there were a few games back then that we started that I wanted to finish. And there's another one for those who want to do some research that will be on the list yeah. as well so okay another one just another yeah one. I'll just give, <laughs> the, give the twin stick yeah. no I, no that's, that's not is. a twin that's just another game we've started at some point but uh okay anyway so that's it a lot, lot of exciting well, things so but thanks for taking the time oh darcy yeah. thanks for oh to you as well for playing uh hopefully yeah you had some fun there I did. Excellent. I totally <laughs> killed some spiders. I was not expecting to kill very many. I killed way more than that. Well, good <laughs> feel. <laughs> good job. <laughs> yeah. And thanks, John, as always, for coming on the show to introduce the new games that you're working on that are coming out and talk about new game releases. We always look forward to uh, talking with you and playing your awesome games. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, no, um, it's, it's fun. It's always, we always got to do this at least once yeah. or twice a year. So this is, so this is yeah, great. So that's usually, yeah, it. appreciate the time. Yeah. Appreciate the support. Thanks for wearing that t-shirt too. Hopefully it'll get someone to buy. I'm not talking to you, Darcy, well, fit. even though that's a nice shirt too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice shirt. Yeah. I, I like to, it's, it's, it's a great shirt and uh, I like to represent when Zen. you're on the Zen. show <laughs> exactly okay well thanks guys and uh so have a great day and we'll get let you get back to your work and uh thank you for coming up. wonderful okay guys thanks and thanks okay. everyone for joining thanks, john the, joining the stream too appreciate yes. it yeah thanks for watching everyone wonderful. okay and uh we'll talk with you later john see you online yep. have fun bye 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 Ah, that was some great games. Um, and I always love when um, John brings these games to the 2600 because um, some of them, a lot of them actually, are games that I've never really invested a lot of time into. Um, especially games like Spiders, which I've never played, never even heard of before this. And it's like an awesome shooter. And it's yeah. like, oh my God. Yeah. It's like a brand new game that's been around for 40 years, 45 years, but it's like yeah <laughs> it's a new game to me <laughs> and it's an awesome game oh yeah, yeah shall we let the cats in they're starving and i'm sure people want to bet do you have to take off like super soon like, yeah immediately almost i should probably leave any minute now okay but we can still feed the cats uh can we do that Is yeah that enough, let's do that time? okay yeah, we'll do that and then release the cats if somebody wants to trigger the the cat feedings meow. the cat bring are they the gonna bells. hear anything oh they'll hear it uh because oh, no, is it plugged won't. in they won't. They won't. They, won't. they will now. Yeah, they will now. Okay, they will now. So, it's if anybody time. wants to trigger, yum, there we go. Yum, yum, yum. Oh my goodness! Oh my god! Oh my goodness! What's happening? Are you excited? It's treat time, kiddies. Are you excited? So let's get that up You're and going. And get the bedding going. It is exciting, isn't it? This is what they wanted the whole time. It's difficult when we have an interview because. I don't want to do cat petting. <laughs> Somebody sitting on the line. Okay, kittens, the bets are started. Place your bets right now. Sid won by f six points last time. Just trounced Atari. <laughs> Just destroyed Atari. Was, well, the last time I was, was here, we had two of them. And yep. Sid... You're good. Sid no kicked butt, <laughs> and then he was too high to win the second time. <laughs> yes, he so was. That was our, our guess, was that he was just like... So here you go. I'll give that out. We've got coverage on Sid 3 to 4. So if you haven't played this before and you're new here, um, you can click predict at the top. Hi, Betty. 
Pick which cat you think will ring the bell 10 times first. And you can pick by how many bell rings the other one will beat them by. Sid is a favorite, obviously. That's why we have categories of one and two, three and four, and five plus for Sid. <laughs> he probably will win, but it's not guaranteed. Atari does win once in a while. That's why he has one category. <laughs> yeah, Just but... in reserve. Oh, we're covered in all of them. Excellent. Got a minute left to go for the betting. So place your bets before the time is up. What's being the favorite? One and two it's for Sid. only 45 seconds. He said a minute, but that was not true. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get sued. We're going to get sued for, for channel points. Yeah, that's right. Because <laughs> right. we don't even have a way of fulfilling that. <laughs> no, we <laughs> don't. I don't know how to give away channel points. You just have to sit or you have to earn them by, uh, by this game. Bet them. Bet your channel points. They are worth nothing except for the cats. They help feed the cats. To them, they're worth everything. If you want to ch close the door when it's the opportune time so Atari doesn't take his treats outside and ruin the whole game. He's been pretty good. Yay! Okay, 10 seconds left. We're going to start this up. Are you ready? I think the cats are ready. So you watch carefully. And, okay. And submissions are closed. We are ready to ring those bells. It's Puss and Bets time. And go! Come on, get that bell. No, don't push it around. Oh, Tari had his paw on it. No, he didn't ring it, though. No sounds yet. And it's Sid for the opening bell. One for Sid. Oh, one for Tari. Some coaching from from Darcy, which is which is good. Maybe they're too far apart. Let's put them over here. Atari's gone off to the corner. Oh, Sid goes for the blue bell. It's 2-1 for Sid. Atari's coming back. He's at the pink bell. A solid ring from Atari. Sid's uh, eating a little slower than before. He's having some soft paws on these bells. No. Oh, he gets it. 3-2. Oh, Atari ties it up. 3-3. Three, three. May, he may fall in the two, two, one or two category. Sid is a little slow today. Oh, Sid's one up on Atari. Atari's back. He's keeping pace. I heard that tiny ring. Oh, another ring from Sid. That did ring. It was very minor. Oh, Atari's doing really well today. He's tied up. If he can just get ahead. No, Sid pulled it off. He's at 6-5. Getting close to the finish line here. Atari's tying it up, but he's, he's still a little behind. There we go. Sid is 7-6. Seven, 7-7 seven, seven for Atari. It is a race to the finish. Sid is at 8. We are close. We're getting very close. Atari's taking his time with this one. Uh-oh. He's falling a little bit behind. Sid's taking his time too. It's 8-8. Eight, eight. It's any cat's game. It's now game point. 9-8 on Sid. Oh, Atari's not going to be able to make it two in here. Sid's already done. Atari's coming back. He's tied it. He's tied it up at nine nine. Sydney Cats game. Next bell wins. Sid's a little distracted. He's not. Oh, he missed it. It's a soft paw on that one. He's black to the bell. He's blue bell. He's pushing. Oh, he gets it on the pink one. It's all over ten nine. Wow. Good job, cats. Good job, Good job Atari. If you only just got ahead at the beginning, you could have done it. So let's see. Who gets the points here? Let's dole them out. Dole them out. Sid, one and two by one whisker. Sid wins. Let's see who wins. It's a thousand points bet on him. It all goes to RC7E. Congratulations, RC7E with a ratio of 1.4 to 1. Nice winnings. Great job, RC7E on that one. Um... So, like I said at the top of the show, we have some great shows coming up. I gotta go. That's okay. Well, we'll say bye to Darcy. And, uh, boom! Say bye to the cats. And I'll just mention the shows and we're gonna sign off. Bye, Darcy! Uh, spotlight on the Immortal John Hancock, October 29th at the end of the month. We're gonna have a spotlight on Albert Iruso coming up. Spotlight on Chris Walton with the release of Xevious. Uh, and we're going to be talking with Bob DeCrescenzo, Pac-Man Plus, with his world premiere of Bounty Bob Strikes Back for the 7800 being released through Atari. Uh, we're going to have uh, an interview with Dan Kitchen from Audacity Games with his world premiere of Casey's Gold. We're going to have uh, Atari Age Day 2024 with all the new Atari Age releases. 
probably spread over two days. There's a lot. We're going to have a Vectrek special. We're going to have a Halloween special. And uh, and anybody who has an Atari VCS 800, the uh, bowling game, Strike Zone Bowling, has turned to Halloween already. So if you have that, um, you can play it with the Halloween skin on it. And, uh, oh, I see his cat. There, cat's gone. <laughs> Atari for next time. Yeah, well, it got really close. I, you might want to bet on Atari next time. Not a huge jackpot. No, not a huge, not many betters. We're doing small bets, small little bets. Remember last time cats were high in, uh, on a high trip? Yes, that's true. But they they did, they were pretty quick, but it doesn't seem to affect uh, Sid. Sid really went through it today. Or last time, I mean, by six points crazy um so thanks for hanging out with us today um it was super awesome they were hungry they were really hungry i actually fed them before the show because i knew they would be menaces during the show as they usually are with interviews because they're like feed us we're here for the food not the games um but they were still menaces because they just want food um, so thanks for hanging out with us, Dan ABC, Mark Zilla, Charles Donimal, Pseudographics, Thomas, um, who else? Old School 70, Blank Quentin, um, Nathan Strum, great job all around on Spiders Arcade and of course on Tutankham Arcade. Always so much fun to play your games. Uh, Ivory Tower Collections, Carl G, Atari Dude Zero, Kabuto Coder, I will get back to you. Um, had to prepare for the show. Uh, who else is in this list? Dianoid, hey Dianoid. Uh, Dark Descent, thank you for the sub. Uh, oh my god, so many names. As I scroll back, I have to remember all the names I've said. And Strawberry System 32, thank you so much for raiding earlier. I was in the middle of talking to John. Um, uh, this, the way it looks in the arcade, so we kept it. The Sphinx looks like it has a mustache. It's it's cute. It's kind of a mix uh, between a person and a cat. And people have mustaches. Yeah, the graphics are just stunning in Tutankham. On all the... The animation of the movement, like I said, it's I'm gonna have to explore that in an after dark and see how far I can get in it, uh, so I can check out all the amazing levels and the level designs. So much fun. Um, so we're out of here for the Friday. We'll be back on Tuesday. What's on Tuesday? Oh, Tuesday! Didn't even mention that. We have an exclusive world premiere on Tuesday of uh, Magic Pockets for the Jaguar uh, from Reboot Games and also the retail version of Jumping at Shadows. So a big day on Tuesday. Um, and then we have an ex a, probably a couple exclusive world premieres next Friday for the 2600. We have at least Batman and we're going to have uh, at least Probably one more, but I will get that lined up. We'll have to check that out first of all. Uh, and we've got some costumes for the cats for the Halloween special. We're going to do an extra day on Halloween since it doesn't land on a Tuesday or Friday. Uh, oh, also November 1st, we have an exclusive world premiere as well of something that's called the Falling Leaves Collection for the 7800, a collection of games on one cartridge. Um, so we're going to be uh, playing that as well. So we have so much coming up on the show so many exclusives so many interviews it'll be packed full to the end of the year that's for sure and i will probably be doing a poll next episode about something um about splitting the channel the zero page channel between the normal shows and the after dark show because i'm planning to do a ramp up of after dark shows because there are so many games that i need to play in after dark now and i think maybe i want to split them off because they don't get as many views and i don't really want to interfere with the normal shows um so i'll probably do it anyway i probably don't even need a poll 
but I've got the channel already set up, ready to go. Um, they'll obviously be here on Twitch, all under one channel, but on YouTube, a separate channel for the After Darks, because they're just like super long shows that a lot of people don't want to sit through. <laughs> and I don't really... I, it doesn't matter how many people watch, but I just wanted to put them on, on another channel. So that's probably going to happen. Um, that looks a bit like John Aston from Adam's Family. Oh, interesting. Okay, so we're out of here. Uh, might do an extra show on the weekend. Maybe an After Dark. Or maybe an After Dark on Monday. Something like that. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So say goodbye, kitties. Oh, they're all full. <laughs> Atari has left the room. He's like, I got what I what I wanted. But uh, Sid's asleep on the floor. So thanks for tuning in, everyone. And uh, have a great weekend. And stay safe out there, especially in Florida area. Um, hopefully everyone's doing okay. And uh, so have a great weekend. And we'll see you at the earliest. Oh, RC78 stepped out of the room. Yes, you did win. <laughs> you just realized you won. Yeah, congratulations. Got a whole bunch of channel points. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. Pseudographics, have a good night. And we will see you back on Tuesday. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.